100 days, 200 days, 300 days, 400 days, 500 days, 600 days, 700 days, day 800, 900 days, 1000 days. That's right, everybody, 1,000 days the movie. It's officially been one year since we did the first 100 ocean days, and that video has accumulated over 15 million views, which is just bonkers. And we managed to survive all the way up to 1,000 days. So I figured to celebrate the anniversary of this world, we should put out 1,000 days the movie. And now I know this video is really long. When I say movie, we're talking Lord of the Rings extended cut practically. But regardless, if you guys obviously don't watch it all in one sitting, that's totally understandable. This video will always be here waiting for you to come back and if you guys have no idea what this series is well you're in for a treat because this is one epic video and if you guys do go on to enjoy it make sure you guys smash that like button hit subscribe join the paul gg army and let's get into 1000 days the movie Day one, I didn't want to spend too much time getting pruny in the ocean, so I swam over to a sunken ship nearby for some loot. There I was able to get a lot of wood and some food. I made sure to take as much wood as possible since I wasn't going to be getting any trees during this series. After punching the ship, I swam to a nearby ravine to get some stone, where I actually heard a baby zombie riding a chicken. I didn't expect to have any surface animals in this series, but I wasn't going to pass on the opportunity. After rescuing the chicken from the possessed child, I had safely escorted him out of the cave. After we made our escape, I realized I spent the entire first day rescuing my little chickpea. And yeah, that's kind of what I, I thought about as the name in the moment. But it was worth it. I spent all night trying to find some decent loot from shipwrecks and fallen portals until I found this giant coral reef. I knew this was going to be where I was going to set up camp. So I patiently waited for the sun to rise. Day two, I began making a simple platform, store my valuables in a chest and for chickpea to live on. Meantime, so that nothing bad happens to him while I go on adventures. He is a hood chicken, so I was a bit skeptical leaving him at home with, uh, with all my valuables. But nonetheless, they had a treasure map from a sunken ship that I figured was worth looting. After setting out on an adventure, and looting a couple ships, I realized I spent almost the entire day going in the wrong direction of the map. But because I didn't have a bed, I figured it was worth traveling through the night. After getting the loot from the treasure chest, I was mildly disappointed. I traveled all the way for one diamond and a bunch of iron. And on top of the bad treasure chest, it started raining. So night two wasn't going so well. I decided to shovel a bunch of sand that I was going to need for a project on day three. And look at that, it's day three now. And it's still raining, so let's get started on that project. I wanted to make a tube that goes from the platform down to the mine shaft below my base. So I dropped a bunch of sand, stopped the water flow, and began mining down. I wanted to create a water source that slows me down whenever I jump down the hole. But I accidentally made it too high and I got myself trapped in a hole. But that's okay because I got a massive brain. I knew I was going to need an exit to swim out anyways. After clearing out a small room, I tested my water dropper and it worked perfectly. Day 4, I spent mining down to level 11 to get those juicy diamonds. After getting down to level 11, I cleared out a small room and started placing some torches to avoid mob spawning. Luckily, with all the materials I got, I can now make iron armor and a shield. I spent the rest of the day cleaning out the mine shaft, doing a bit of vein mining and it wasn't too long until we found our first set of diamonds and on our second vein we actually found even more we were already rolling in diamonds when i surfaced i noticed it started getting a little dark so i spent the night traveling all the way back to spawn where i saved chickpea since there was a mine shaft there i knew i'd be able to get some string to make wool and then a bed after getting in the mine shaft i also immediately found a name tag so i could give that to chickpea to make sure he never despawns I spent a lot of time roaming around in the mine shaft, collecting string and trying to find chest, hoping to get a sapling. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen though. Day five, I surfaced and noticed the day was almost over. But then I was attacked by undead Poseidon. So I clapped his cheeks and stole his triton. I decided since the day is almost over anyways, I might as well go back to the mine shaft. Boy, was that a mistake though. Cause right when I got back, I started getting bullied by tons of mobs. Since this is hardcore, I ain't gonna die today. We gonna go ahead and leave. I spent the rest of day five traveling home just in time for the sunset. Set. I made a bed, finally got my first night's sleep. Day six through seven, I figured now that we have a decent bit of materials, I should start working on the base. I decided to start expanding and going upwards from the docks. I feel this will look pretty cool. I decided the first expansion was going to be a giant circle filled with dirt that I got from the mine shaft and hope that one day maybe I could get a sapling or a grass block for animals to spawn. Hey, speaking of animals, where's Chickpea? 
That chicken did not seriously leave me. I also made a smaller circle so I can start farming with all the food that I've been hoarding from the sea. Day eight, despite finding Nemo's dad's warning about leaving the reef, I chose to set off an adventure and not too far out of the reef, I actually found Jigby. I knew he couldn't survive without me. I took him safely home. Now I really set out on an adventure. I was really hoping to find anything that would help me survive this hundred days. I really wanted to get saplings for trees. I stopped at every single ship and fallen portal. I even went treasure hunting and you guys know I hate treasure chests. At the end of the day, I decided to Google whether or not I could even get saplings. Uh, it turns out, yeah, no, I can't. Day nine, I was still sad about finding out that I wasn't able to get saplings. So I spent the entire day working on my farm. You guys know I love farming, but some bad news is I also realized Chickpea is gone again. Day 10, I decided I should probably hunt down Chickpea. So I began circling around the base to try to find him. This time I thought he was actually gone, but nope, I, he can't escape me. I found him splashing his feathers around the edge of the reef again. I took him home and made sure that this time I'd block him into a hole. But I also decided to make an anvil, given the name tag that I had gotten in the mine shaft. Not gonna lie, last minute I wanted to name him Wilson for obvious reasons. Day 11, I noticed that there was a tiny island nearby. So I decided to go on an adventure to hopefully find another island that might have a grass block on it. But while searching, I noticed some odd light source down in the water. It turned out to be a fully exposed stronghold. That's gonna save me a lot of time later when we go to fight the dragon. I quickly found the portal room, destroyed the silverfish spawner so that we can have a secure room later on. After leaving the stronghold, I continued the adventure in hopes to finding an island. After looting tons of portals and ships and not seeing any islands, I had to give up and go home. Day 12, I wanted to start building an official house. However, wood is going to be an issue later on. So I figured I should just go to the nether and get some wood there. But first, I would make armor with all the diamonds that I got from mining. Then I made, then I made my way down to the mine shaft to get some obsidian for the portal. After punching obsidian for what felt like forever, I built our first portal. Don't worry, this isn't going to be a permanent portal. I, I'll make a cooler one later. Day 13 through 15, I spent in the nether. The portal luckily spit us out in a crimson forest, which is going to be pretty great later on when we need wood. I basically just spent the next two days wandering around in the nether trying to find anything useful. I managed to find a bastion not far from the portal, which could be very useful for some resources. However, it's stables, the worst bastion. After giving up on trying to find gold in it, I continued to wander in hopes of finding a fortress in a warped forest. Spoilers, I only found one of those, and it wasn't a fortress. I spent a lot of time trying to find all the biomes. Somehow, I still just couldn't find a fortress. But that's fine, because we gathered lots of resources that we'd be able to use on a house. Day 16, I began building a, the biggest... <laughs> I began building the biggest circle I've ever built, so I could have plenty of room to be able to build a new house. But I heavily underestimated how much cobble I would need, so I had to go down to the mines, and since your boy always forgets to put torches, there was a party going on down there. I had some close calls with some skellies, but nothing to be worried about. I basically spent the rest of day 16 mining all the cobblestone that I would need for this build. But it was worth it because I managed to find some more diamonds. Day 17, I began the build process for the house. And if you guys have been subscribed for a while, you would know that I'm horribly indecisive with building houses. It literally took me until day 19 to decide on a build. And it didn't even include any of the wood I got from the nether. Instead, it would be blackstone and basalt. So on day 18, I spent back in the nether getting basalt and blackstone and nothing nothing too special on this day but on day 19 we had a game plan we had a design that is until we heard a wandering trader show up i quickly stopped everything i was doing to go talk to him because he's able to sell me saplings which he did have some he had birch saplings the ugliest most disgusting tree i thought the minecraft gods were against me that is until I threw an egg that chickpea laid and popped out another chicken. That's when I realized I'm going to be a chicken rancher. Anyways, I grabbed all my emeralds and started buying things off the wandering trader. However, I wasn't going to let him get away that easily. So I picked him up in the brown pearl and hoped that he wouldn't despawn since, he ha <laughs> since he's in a boat. Day 20, I continued the house. It was turning out magnificent. I honestly enjoyed this build a lot. Day 21, I spent the entire day moving into the new house and organizing all my stuff into chests. Again, I forgot to put torches in my house and now a bunch of zombies moved in. I had to quickly take care of them so I could get my first night's sleep in the new house. Day 22, I began working on my farms. I started expanding those delicious potatoes and getting rid of all the beetroots because, come on, who actually likes beetroot? Afterwards, I figured I'd chop down the birch trees to make sure I got some more saplings. So I patiently waited. And luckily, we got a birch sapling. <laughs> 
I, be I began planning a bur I began planning a birch forest. I resisted the temptation of throwing up while doing it because I knew it'd be good for my chickens to have a better place to live other than a boat and a hole. With all that wood I got, I was able to make a bunch of fences to make sure my chickens don't get swept out to sea. Day 23, I knew I'd be working on enchants at some point, so I needed a place to put my enchantment room. So I thought it'd be a pretty cool idea to make a basement underneath the house where I would have my enchantment table and bookshelves. When finishing up the basement, I heard strange demon sounds coming from outside. Got me a little bit worried, I'm not gonna lie. If you didn't hear it, uh, it's like a puffer fish. Like when you're like, whoop. Day 24, I thought it'd be a good idea to go to the nether, try to slay some hoglins to get leather for books. Turned out this wasn't the case and I wasted almost an entire day and I hardly got any leather. But before I quit, I saw a party of piglins hunting down a bunch of hoglins in the area. That's when I realized I could actually get a lot of leather from piglin trades. So on day 25, I grabbed all my gold and returned to the nether. It wasn't too hard to round up a bunch of these small brains and put them in a hole. Then it became a waiting game. Them evaluating what kind of trash they're going to give me for my quality gold. But it worked out in the end because I got a lot of leather, pearls, string, and a lot of other things. When I woke up on day 26, I heard a bunch of mobs in the basement. I realized I forgot to put torches down there. No worries, I'll just get to- Oh my god, there's a creeper! I didn't realize he followed me up the waterfall. After he exploded, I thought half my house was going to be gone. But luckily, since he was completely underwater, he didn't do any structural damage. After getting rid of the squatters in the basement, I realized Chickpea is still stuck in a hole. After freeing him, he was terrified. He was terrified of the outside world. He wouldn't even move. So I got the only seed I had to try to lure him into, a ch into the chicken forest. Turns out chickens do like beetroot seeds. That's news to me. Day 27, I began working on the bookshelves for our enchantment room. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough paper for the whole thing. So I set out on an adventure and somehow I keep discovering new ships. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'll obviously take all the loot. I just figured that, you know, eventually I would run out of the ones nearby. A lot of adventuring, I found what might be the tiniest little island. It's literally just one block. But the sun was setting and the adventure was coming to an end because I finally got all the paper that I was going to need. So I wrangled up a dolphin and swam back home. Day 28, I finished making all the bookshelves that I would need for the enchantment room to give us the max level enchantments. Now, all I needed was an enchantment table, but I realized I needed obsidian. So I decided to tear down an underwater portal that's right next to the house. After after completing the enchantment table, naturally the first thing I would enchant is my pickaxe, and I got terrible enchants, so I immediately grindstoned that bad boy. Day 29, I decided with our new enchantment table that I was probably going to need to start making some XP farms. I decided just making that iconic mob grinder, since it's easy to AFK and let mobs build up. But first, I would need a lot of cobblestone, so back to the mines for us. I pretty much spent the entire day punching rocks, but I did at least add some torches to the mine shaft. Day 30, now that we got all the materials for the mob grinder, it was building time. We had to start with that classic circle platform i'm starting to worry that the base might start looking a little bit wonky because all the circles are different sizes anyways i won't bore you too much with the details since everyone's built a mob grinder before but i tried not to waste as much time as possible while building it so i worked through the night that was a huge mistake there was way too many mobs on the ground level and there was even creepers in my house but thanks to my trusty bow and my big brain i was able to snipe them through the window so that i can get a good night's rest day 31 i was putting the finishing touches on the mob grinder However, the mobs were instantly dying whenever they would hit the ground. That works well for getting materials. However, I need XP. So I raised the platform a bit so that the mobs don't take fall damage. Seemed like it was working for the most part. So I figured I would let the mobs pile up while I went to go check on my baby chickens and chop down the birch forest for more fences. Day 32, I noticed mobs still weren't surviving the fall. So I raised the platform a bit more. It seemed like it was working perfectly now. So while waiting for mobs, I decided to start working on the potato farm until suddenly a zombie villager fell down. This was huge. I didn't actually think that I was going to have a chance to get a villager during this series. I sprang into action. Luckily, it was turning nighttime, so I quickly got a boat so I can make sure he won't despawn. Then I had the realization that the wandering trader actually despawned in a boat. I quickly built a shelter around him so that I could sleep and he won't die during daylight. Day 33, I realized I wasn't prepared for this. The only thing I had was a spider eye. I was still gonna need a brown mushroom, some blaze rods for a brewing stand, an apple, and some sugar. Now, I didn't know how long I would have or if he would ever even despawn. But regardless, I ran through the nether to get some brown mushrooms. That was easy. But what wasn't easy is finding a fortress because I hadn't found one yet. Luckily, not too far from the basalt biome that I've been farming at, there was actually a fortress. I was able to quickly navigate through the fortress to the blaze spawners. I even still had a fire rest potion on me from trading with piglins. After getting all the blaze rods, I needed to hurry home to set up the brew stands. Day 34, I realized birch trees don't drop apples. So with the power of Google, I found out that I could actually get apples out of the stronghold chests. And luckily, since we found the stronghold already by accident, I quickly 
quickly sailed over. To my surprise, there was another zombie villager actually in there. I thought there's no way I could be this lucky. Well, I wasn't. I needed wood for a boat. But then I got chased by a creeper. Then that creeper blew up that another zombie villager. But that's okay because I looted a chest in the creeper room and there was exactly one apple by itself. The Minecraft gods were definitely on my side today. For the rest of the day, I spent traveling around and hopefully trying to find an island that'll have some sugar cane on it. Day 35, I luckily did find that exact island. But I was so far from home that it would take an entire day just to get back. So day 36, revival day. After making sure our new friend hadn't despawned, I rushed in to make potions so I could bathe him and feed him those delicious golden apples. I figured while waiting for him to revive, I should work on making him a house. It didn't have to be too big or flashy, just big enough for him to stretch his legs a bit. While building it, I was notified that he was no longer a smelly boy, which works out because I was pretty much done with the house anyways. After moving him in, he didn't seem too excited for some reason, but maybe that's because he wants a friend. Day 37, I was getting pretty annoyed with the current system I have with getting up and down in my house. So I figured why not just build a water elevator? I've done it before, how hard could it be? Well, I spent the whole day flooding my house and getting irritated until I finally gave up and watched a tutorial. Turns out I just need to place some blocks on the side so water doesn't pour out. I decided to use glass though, since it looks fancy. Day 38 was a pretty random day. Didn't have much of a game plan. I started off by decorating my villager's house. Then I just got some enchantments on my armor. Punched some mobs in the grinder. I wasn't sure what job I wanted to give my first villager. So I tabbed out to Google all the benefits. Then I got sidetracked and started watching a PewDiePie video for the rest of the day. Ooh, what's that? Eight. I'll take it. Day 39, I finally decided what job would be the most useful for me right now. A lectern. So that I can get a lot of mending books. But also, I was able to buy name tags. The first thing he wanted to sell me was Silk Touch, which was actually a hard thing to say no to, considering if somehow, some way, I'm able to find a grass block, I'm going to need it. But after that, I spent the entirety of day 39 resetting his trades. He kept offering me all these OP enchants, like looting and infinite and more Silk Touch, but he would not give me mending. That is until day 40. Day 40, he finally gave me the mending books, and practically for free. I bought a couple mending books and put them on my pickaxe and chest plate. I spent the rest of the day working on the farms and multiplying chickens. It was just a chore day, really. That is until the sun started setting and another zombie villager fell down the mob grinder. I was sure this was going to be easy since I did this before. All I got to do is lure him over. After I got him in a boat, it... Yep, no, it died. He died. At first, I was pretty confused. But then I remembered I had thorns on my chest plate, so every time the zombie villager would hit me, he would also take damage. So today was a sad day. Day 41, I started off right by chopping away at the mob grinder. But for some reason, there was a music disc in there. I mean, I'm not going to complain. You can't go wrong with some sweet tunes. But there was no time for music because I decided to go on an adventure today. I wanted to do some nether travel. So I'm able to not run that far away in the nether, but teleport super far away in the overworld. After going through the portal, it spawned me right next to some diamonds which i thought was pretty awesome but then there was more diamonds and even more this actually blew my mind first of all to be lucky enough to find diamonds right outside of a portal but then find three stacks or three piles of diamonds since i have fortune on my pickaxe i actually ended up with 37 diamonds but i didn't come here for the diamonds i surfaced and it was all depressing and raining outside so i slept Day 42. My real goal for coming all the way out here is to hopefully find an island with a grass block. It's becoming harder to believe that that's even going to be possible to get. I spent the entire day boating around. I stopped at a lot of ships because these are pretty far away from home and I'm never going to see them again anyways. Then I found a drowned with an enchanted triton. I had to clap his cheeks. I wanted to know what enchants he had. But unfortunately, he took that triton to the grave. After that, I managed to find a pretty large island with some sugar cane on it. This gave me a lot of hope that I could still find a grass block. But it was getting dark, so I camped out on the island. Day 43 after leaving the island i couldn't find anything really good at all this ocean started actually making me a little crazy i couldn't even find any more islands but then in the distance i noticed a chicken this confused me because it didn't look like there was any caves nearby that he could have came out of this sealed the deal that i truly am the chicken god though after i wrangled him in the brown pearl i decided it was time to go home on the way back to the portal i realized it wasn't going to be easy to take that chicken all the way underwater then through the nether without seeds that left me with no other choice I decided to leave him on a small island, I found. Who knows, maybe one day I'll come back for him. Day 44, we were back at home. I have in my notes that I accidentally AFK'd because I was eating a bowl of cereal. So, day 45. We started off by leaving base camp because I needed to go shovel some sand. Why sand, you ask? Because I wanted to craft some TNT, of course. But for TNT, we would need a lot of gunpowder. So we started swinging away at the mob grinder. However, I noticed it was getting pretty slow. So I climbed all the way to the top of it and it sounded like there were some spiders clogging it up. I figured I wouldn't worry about 
about it too much right now because I already had a lot of gunpowder. Day 46, I went into the nether and started digging down to Y level 17. Everyone knows this is the best level to mine with TNT. After laying a big strip of TNT and many explosions later, with only a couple close calls to burning to death, we finally got some ancient debris. It wasn't much, especially because we used all of our TNT, but that's okay, because we got an OP enchanted pickaxe. A lot of people hate mining for ancient debris with their pickaxe, but honestly, it's like ASMR to me. And since I had mending, all I had to do was hit some quartz every now and then. But it was worth it because I managed to bag 10 ancient debris before heading home. With 10 ancient debris, I can make two ingots, which I actually used on my chest plate and pickaxe. So today was a pretty good day. Day 47, I started off by making a bunch of carpet so I can hopefully stop spiders from spawning inside the mob grinder. So I climbed to the top and hopped inside. It didn't seem like there was anything too wrong with it, but I figured I already committed to the carpet, so I might as well place them. While waiting for mobs to start raining from the mob grinder, I decided to hatch all the eggs I've been hoarding. Let's just say I got pretty lucky, further proving my point that I am the chicken god. Day 48, I had a late start to the day, but I started off right, enchanting my pants. I managed to get some protection and I'm breaking. That's better than nothing. While on my way to the mob grinder, I noticed there was another wandering trader. I rushed over to see what kind of trades he has. And turns out, he has some oak saplings. I mean, he also has acacia saplings, but oak saplings. But what was weird about him is that he didn't have his leads. I'd only ever seen this one other time, and it was because the leads broke, and I assumed they just despawned. But regardless, I busted out that bling bling, and I bought a handful of saplings. Day 49 was possibly the best day ever. It's finally time to get rid of the gross birch forest. After chopping all the logs and getting a little impatient, I burned down the leaves. After planting all the oak trees, I used some bone meal to make sure that I was going to get some more saplings day 50 halfway to 100 i started off the day by making some more diamond tools because i'm rolling in diamonds and i didn't even realize that my tools all weren't diamond yet afterwards i wanted to go farm the mob grinder but it still is just crazy slow i'm starting to realize that i can't rely on this thing for xp but i figured i'd do a tiny bit more testing before i officially gave up i added an extra layer of slabs on top to the roof to maybe somehow that maybe if there's any light bleeding through the corners it seemed like it was doing a bit better throughout the day however right before I slept, I noticed another zombie villager. Me being the professional zombie villager snatcher, I was able to sneak him out and trap him in a dirt hut. Then I gave him that sweet nectar so then he could become human again. Day 51, I wanted to enchant the last of my armor. And my axe surprisingly got silk touch on it. Also, our new villager is no longer a zombie. I wasn't sure what job I wanted to give him and then it hit me. I wanted him to become a farmer for a couple of reasons. One, I can sell him potatoes and make tons of money. And two, he'll hopefully sell apples so I could turn into more golden apples. Day 52 through 57. Since one of my goals for this 100 days is to have full netherite armor, I needed to get to mining. I crafted all the TNT I could and set off on an adventure into the nether. This time I decided to dig down in a fresh new area. While I was mining with TNT, I managed to somehow only get one ancient debris with all, all of my TNT. I wasn't going to leave until I had enough netherite for all my armor. So I started mindlessly swinging my pickaxe for the next five days. Yes, literally five Minecraft days. I only stopped because my pickaxe was getting dangerously low. On the way home, I tried my best to heal it by punching as much of the quartz as I could for XP. Day 58, after making a home with all the goods, I quickly made all the netherite ingots I got. And I even managed to get that sweet achievement for all my armor. I decided to save my last ingot because I couldn't really decide if I wanted to use it on my axe or sword. Regardless, I decided to flex on everyone with my new armor. The wandering merchant was in awe. Oh, the farmer was impressed and the chickens, well, they just gave me some more eggs. After my flex fest, I took a look around and realized the place needed a bit of work. I decided to start off by working on the dock. Seems like it would be a pretty simple project to start and it didn't take that much time. I thought it looked pretty good afterwards. But after the dock, I decided to break the nether portal because I wanted to move it to be a part of the base. Day 59, I started off by collecting eggs, but then I noticed a tree grew and suffocated one of my chickens. So I slayed that tree. Not Honestly, it was probably a good thing though, because I'm starting to have too many chickens. Afterwards, I began working on the new platform for the nether portal. I wanted to make it big enough to where I got all the room for a custom looking portal. That's when life took a 180. After I made a giant platform, I realized it was heavily lopsided. So I had to tear it all down and rebuild it again. This took an entire another day. Day 61, I finally finished building the platform. Yes, again. Day 62 to 63, I began working on construction for the portal. I've always been a fan of custom looking portals that look oddly shaped. For this one, I was going to try to make it a bit more like a like a circle. I think it ended up looking pretty 
awesome. Day 63, I wanted to get some XP for some enchants, but I had completely given up on the mob grinder. I knew I was going to need something much more reliable, so I decided to venture back to spawn where we found Chickpea, because there was that mine shaft always coming in clutch. But that also means that there was going to be a spider spawner. I remember using a spider farm in my previous 100 day video, and it worked out great. Day 64, I managed to find the spider spawner, but it was in a horrible location. But it was the only one I could find, so I needed to make it work. I pretty much spent the entire day clearing out the room and fighting mobs because they wouldn't leave me alone and let me work in peace. Day 65, we made some good progress on the farmer. We managed to get the room shaped out and got water flowing. But then there was too much water since the cave opened up into the ocean. That just slowed down everything and made it so much more difficult. Day 66, I was able to put the final touches on the spawner and get rid of all the torches. Day 67, I AFK'd almost the entire day, but within good reason. On day 68, there was a giant swarm of spiders piled up. I mean, how satisfying is that? Not to mention all the XP I got. Oh, yeah. Day 69. <laughs> nice. I decided to put all those levels to use. I started by enchanting my sword, which I managed to get smite. Could be better, but honestly, I'll just take it. Day 70, I decided to spend the entire day leveling my farmer so I could be able to get apples that I could turn into golden apples. But because I'm so lucky, he decided to sell me pumpkin pies instead of apples. But because I got a big brain, I was also chopping down trees, which I was able to get apples that way. Day 71, I wanted to spend all my riches by buying mending books for all my netherite equipment. Last thing you'd want is for one of those things to break. Otherwise, didn't really do too much on this day. Day 72, since I lost all my levels using those mending books, I needed more XP for one last enchant my bow. So I spent all of day 72 at the spider spawner farm. After getting back to level 30, I left and went straight home to do some enchants. Naturally, I would have wanted infinite, but I could definitely settle with damage 4 and breaking and knockback. Day 73, I spent the entire day getting gold. I was pretty tempted to go to an ocean monument and get gold there, but I didn't want to have to risk getting miners fatigue and have to sit around waiting for it since we didn't have milk. So I decided to mine all the gold that we've been skipping in the nether. And with my fortune pickaxe, you already know I got a lot of gold. I managed to craft all the apples I had into golden apples and even make a stack of golden carrots. I also realized I still had that one netherite ingot. I decided to use it on my sword. Day 74, honestly, I just wanted to relax and hang out. I gave my last goodbyes to my villagers and even the chickens, even though they're beginning to overpopulate, but it doesn't matter. Tomorrow could be the end. Day 75, I grabbed my ender pearls, crafted 12 eyes, and double checked to make sure I had everything I was gonna need. Then I set off to the stronghold. When I entered the portal room, it was just chaos. There were so many mobs everywhere. After clearing the room, it was time. I jumped in. Day 76, after returning home from that Ender Dragon fight, I knew the adventure wasn't over. For me, at least. The Wandering Trader, he was done for. Mainly because I needed the boat he was in. But also, I wanted a new trader to spawn. Regardless, I went back to the stronghold and jumped into the end. Because I wanted to get an Elytra. But what I didn't know is that this would be an 11-day journey before I even found my first end city. In the beginning, I was carelessly purling around and fighting Endermen, which made me waste so much food. I mindlessly kept running around until... On day 87. Because on day 87, I found my first end city. This thing was huge. But when I approached it, my worst nightmares became reality. The first end city I found didn't even have a ship, which meant no elytra. I have never had this bad of luck in Minecraft. I was dangerously low on food, but I had to keep going. Day 89, I managed to find another end city. And this one was definitely the biggest one I have seen yet. I mean, it was massive. But more importantly, while approaching it, I noticed there was a ship. I gathered blocks and climbed up to it, slayed the shulkers, and got my elytra. 
There was also some decent diamond gear inside the chest. With the elytra, I was able to find a portal fairly easily to make my way home. I pretty much wanted to spend the remainder of the 100 days at home. Day 91, I realized I should probably start getting my villagers to breed. But my lectern was being pretty difficult and just kept wanting to go back home. Actually took forever just to get it into the fence. I had to make like a little bridge and kind of boat it over. It, just, it was a whole thing. Day 92, I woke up to the sounds of lovemaking. I looked out my window to find my villagers having a great time. Time. but it turns out they just weren't compatible this is gonna make things a lot harder because then i'd had to get another zombie villager to try to do the baby making after awkwardly examining my villagers i realized how much the cobblestone floor started bothering me so on day 93 i spent the entire day working on a cool pattern down near the docks I realized I liked it so much that I spent the next two days pretty much redoing the outline of all the circles at my base. Ideally, I wanted to swap out all the cobblestone entirely with Bruce wood, but for that, I'd probably need a sapling. Day 94, I decided now that I got an elytra, I'm gonna need some fireworks. But for that, I'm gonna need a lot of paper. So I began constructing a small sugarcane farm for the next two days. But on day 95, a wandering merchant had spawned. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have any good deals. And I wasn't gonna pass up another chance to get some leads. I realized I might wanna save one of the llamas, but then it fell in water and then it just kind of turned into too much work and it kept spitting at me. So maybe next time. For the remainder of the day, I pretty much just spent working on the sugarcane farm. Day 96, I realized this entire series, I have not fished not even once all this ocean and not even fished one of the most relaxing peaceful and fun things to do in minecraft so i thought it'd actually be an awesome idea to build a vacation house so i went to the island nearby the base and decided to start building a little vacation house for us where you know I'll probably do my relaxing my fishing things like that and after completing my awesome little vibey spot it was time to throw out my first cast and this is where i'm going to hit you with a cheesy pickup line I hope I hooked you with this video. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Day 101, I wanted to hit the ground running because there was a lot of things I wanted to accomplish during these next 100 days, starting with my villager farms, actually. A lot of comments pointed out the fact that I needed more beds to be able to have my villagers start multiplying. Honestly, I don't know how I even forgot about that. So I moved my lectern back over to the farmer's place and laid down a couple beds so they could get to the baby making. I figured while the villagers were getting it on, I'd spend the rest of day 101 building a giant platform for a new villager house. By the time I was done, the villagers already popped out a baby. Day 102, because a lot of people like the blackstone builds I've been doing, I figured I would just continue that theme for the villager house. So I pretty much just spent the entire day of 102 in the nether, just grabbing a lot of blackstone and basalt, like a lot. That's when I realized while well, gathering all this blackstone and basalt, salt i i really need to get some shulker boxes day 103 to 105 we're back at home and we're getting started on the new villager shake shack you guys know i would take a good looking build over a functional build any day so i spent the next two days pretty much just working on what i actually think turned out to be a really dope house day 104 i started to day 104 i started the annoying and tedious process of moving these villagers somehow they continue to keep making babies even when they didn't have enough beds honestly i was more impressed than anything luckily while moving them i developed a pretty solid tech Technique. I would set down a job and promise them a stable living and a good life. Then I would just take it away from them. And I would just kind of repeat that process all the way to the new house. Can't believe they fell for it every time. Day 105, I moved my final villager over and started making beds and jobs for everyone. I made sure that there was plenty of beds so they could just populate like crazy. Started doing a couple of trades just to lock them in. That's when I noticed the mob grinder was getting pretty full, so I hacked that thing down. How satisfying is that? It's actually working now for some reason. Day 106, I only had a few things left to do for the villagers but first i wanted some eggs in the morning so i ran through the chicken forest proceeding to pick up eggs and birth the chickens afterwards i'd farm a bunch of potatoes because with all these new villagers i got a lot of mouths to feed and pretty much the last big event of the day i wanted to get a bunch of sand so then i could start making glass and, and fill in all the windows at the villager house some people were getting pretty triggered that i didn't put any windows in my house in the last hundred days but honestly i kind of like the ability to just jump out a window whenever i want to kind of just feels right after patiently waiting for all the sand to cook Day 107, I grabbed all the glass and began finishing up the Shake Shack. While waiting for more sand to cook, I was shoveling a bunch of flint so that I can start making some Fletchers, because stick trades are honestly just the best. They're just so easy to get so much, and you make so much money. After setting up some Fletchers and locking in their trades, I finished up the last window, and honestly, I really like the way this house turned out. Day 108, I was getting pretty sick of dealing with villagers, so I just I needed a break. I decided to make an automatic sugarcane farm. So I began crafting some observers and some hoppers, and... Uh, 
And that is until a little villager kid escaped from the jail. I, I mean, the Shake Shack. Luckily, they decided to leave me alone for forever. Well, getting everything all set up for the sugarcane farm, I realized I was running pretty low on iron. Possibly an iron farm in the future? Probably. But for now, I spent the rest of day 108 down in the mines trying to get as much iron as I could. And of course, I got some diamonds. Day 109 to 110, I started off by building a blast furnace because I don't know why it took me this long to make it, but yep, those exist. But that definitely helps speed along the process. I won't bore you too much with the details since this sugarcane farm is pretty self-explanatory. Or at least I thought. I mean, it took me two days to remember how to make this thing. But after laying some rails and slapping some redstone on it, it was coming together. After finishing up the build, I tested it out and it looks like everything's working perfectly. Now I can have a steady supply of sugarcane for fireworks and paper. Day 111, today was a bit of an adventure day. I grabbed some fireworks and slapped on the elytra because we're flying over to the stronghold. I wanted to run through it, looting all the chests that I could find. But most importantly, I wanted to find... Yeah. But most importantly, I wanted to find some bookshelves so I could just have a big supply of books for villager trades. After finding the library, I began chopping down all that knowledge. And yes, I looted the chest. Don't worry. They were pretty dookie as always. After clearing out the room, I realized that there's some potential. This could be a cool build sometime in the future. But for now, we head home. I honestly didn't even realize how many bookshelves I had. I started setting them up in the enchantment room and I realized there's just too many. So I started putting some in the bedroom and stored the rest. Day 112, I started off by doing some trades. I bought myself a mending book because the elytra need. All right, yeah. I have a typo here and it's like throwing me off as I read it. There we go. I bought myself a mending book so I could put it on my elytra. With all this flying I'm doing, I'm going to need it. After upgrading the elytra, I went to the mob grinder to heal it back up. The rest of day 112 was spent pretty much just doing random stuff. I decided I wanted to make a garbage disposal instead of throwing all my materials out into the ocean. All I needed to do was go to the nether, get a bucket of lava. After wandering around for a bit, I had the perfect idea. I decided to tear down the old villager hut and build a new storage room where I could store all my building blocks and have my garbage disposal. But after tearing down the villager hut, I, I realized the platform's uneven, as always. I don't know how I keep doing this. But luckily, I've become a pro at fixing them and it didn't take that long. Day 113, I began construction on the storage room. I didn't need it to be too flashy. I mean, it was just gonna be storing a few chests. But one thing's for sure, I didn't wanna end up making a cupcake roof. All right, look, I'll fix it. All right, calm down. After breaking a couple of blocks, eh, no, not really a cupcake roof anymore, right? Looks okay. Day 114, I pretty much just spent the entire day setting up the chests and organizing my storage. This was a long and tedious process that reminds me how much I need a shulker box. So on day 115, I decided it was time to go get some shulker shells. So I set on an adventure to go to the end. This time around, I already knew where the end city was and I had elytra to get around. So that would save me a bunch of time. After getting to the end city, I was greeted by some snot rockets. After slaying the bouncers at the door, I decided to, why not? You know, I'm already here. Might as well climb this thing, slaying as many shulkers as I could. Or try at least. I mean, I, I did my best. After getting all the shulker shells I came for, I figured why not loot a couple chests. I tried to break the end chest, uh, but it, it turned into obsidian. Dude, do I need silk touch? I mean, th this is kind of a new moment. I'm sorry. I don't usually use these things. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it right now. Because we're heading home with all the shulker shells we came for. After getting home, I crafted all my shulker boxes and spent the rest of the day hanging out with the chickens and chopping some trees. Day 116, I started off by enchanting a new diamond axe. Because I was getting pretty tired of using silk touch touch on everything. Afterwards, I remember I found a piece of bamboo out of a shipwreck a little while ago. So I figured I would add it to the sugarcane farm since it pretty much grows the same. That's when I realized the minecart didn't really travel all the way over to the bamboo. So it's kind of pointless. I really didn't feel like tearing it apart right now because we got another adventure to go on. So I healed up my elytra at the mob grinder and I realized it was breaking pretty fast because it didn't actually have unbreaking on it. So I crafted another lectern for my villagers in hopes of being able to get an unbreaking book. But it took me the rest of the day just to be able to get them to sell me an unbreaking book. Day 117, I equipped my elytra with unbreaking and we set off. My goal was to find the lonely chicken that we left stranded on the island in the first 100 days. A lot of people felt bad for him and said I should go back for him. The only problem is I couldn't really remember the exact coordinates of where I left him. After traveling for almost an entire day, I found a new larger island that I had never seen before. I started to question if I was even going in the right day. Or I was Start, I was starting to question if I was even going in the right direction. That is until on day 118, I managed to find an island that once had sugarcane on it. And this island actually wasn't that far away from where I found island chicken. So I knew I was getting close. But I continued to fly farther and farther until I finally found what looked like the island that I left him at. After landing, I found feathers floating in the water. Now either, either I dropped those seven feathers when I left him or a drowned with looting three killed my island chicken. Either way, island chicken was gone. It was a sad day.
Day 119, I pretty much spent the entire day traveling back home. I was running out of fireworks, so I landed on an island to get some sugar cane and sleep. That's what I realized. This island kind of shaped like a giant volcano. I thought it was impressive and worth showing. <clears throat> day 120, we're back at home. I decided to start the day off by picking up all the eggs in the chicken forest and making a tomb for the island chicken. But that's when chicken 103 was murdered by a tree. 103 was one of my favorites. Yes, I definitely kept track of all my chickens. Don't question that. Of course, I gave the tree what it deserved as well. But now I had to make two tombstones. It was truly a sad day. For the rest of day 120, I pretty much just spent doing miscellaneous things around the base. And I started fixing the sugarcane farm as well. Day 121, I decided it was time to slay an elder guardian. The idea of the idea of drowning to death haunts me every single day in this world. So I grabbed my respiration helmet and decided to see how long I could survive underwater without any potions. Turns out a while, but I didn't want to trust my helmet and just some doors. So I decided to start hunting down the ever so elusive puffer fish. After a couple close calls, I returned back to the lab where I started cooking up some underwater breathing potions and i figured since i'm already here i might as well be a bit extra you know and make some potions of strength as well wait did i just seriously make a mundane potion yeah after making the right potion this time i got a good night's sleep so i could clap that elder fish in the morning day 122 i started off by farming because i realized that if i don't come back from this adventure my villagers are gonna starve so after gathering up all the potatoes i fed them what could be their last meal afterwards i hopped in the brown pearl and i sailed off to the nearest ocean monument i wanted to try to sneak Sneak up on it and get some gold before I got mining fatigue. Now the trick to this is you just sneak around through the back. I drank my underwater breathing potion. And, are you serious? I seriously got mining fatigue already? Well, that plan failed. So now I'm just gonna try swimming through the front door. But after going through the front door, I realized it was it was apparently blocked off. There was there was literally no way for me to go through this thing. So my only choice is to sit and wait for the mining fatigue to go away. Really? It reset before it ran out? After giving up on this monument, I decided to sail over to another one nearby. This time, I was going to try the trick where you lower your render distance all the way down. The Elder Guardian doesn't really load in yet. But while sitting and waiting for the mining fatigue to go away, it started to get dark out. So I figured I'd sail home and sleep. Day 123, today's the day I clap that fish. I sailed back over to the ocean monument with limited vision. Okay, I needed to turn it back up just a little bit just to be able to find the thing. I started getting a little lost. After locating the ocean monument, I swam in through the back. I immediately got lost inside and got miners fatigue, but that's okay because luckily I found my target. Oh, well, well, that was easier than I thought. I figured while I still had my potion effects, I decided I might as well swim over and clap another Elder Guardian and get as many sponges as I can. After beating his fish sticks... Oh, that sounds wrong. After clapping that Elder Guardian, I wanted to wait and see if I still get mining fatigue, since there isn't any Elder Guardians left. But after waiting a while, mining fatigue reapplied. And with my underwater breathing potion running out, I figured it would probably be best if I just try to get out and sail home. Day 124, I realized my axe and shovel still aren't netherite. So I figured I can go TNT mining in the nether for some ancient debris only problem is i keep running out of sand somehow so i swam to the edge of the reef and i shoveled sand for the entire day yes entire day i i'm so tired of having to go get sand day 125 i accidentally left minecraft open while eating some dino nuggies i even tweeted about it day 126 to 129 i crafted all the tnt i had grabbed my gold boots and hopped into the nether after using all my tnt it revealed no ancient debris i spent the next two days just mindlessly swinging my pickaxe to try to find them. I don't know how I did this in the first 100 days. I was going crazy in here, but after getting all the ancient debris I needed, I left immediately. Day 130, we're back in the overworld, and I finally got my netherite axe and shovel. In the moment, I was pretty excited, but honestly, looking back on it, I'm mildly disappointed in myself. After all this adventuring, I decided it was time to do some epic builds at home, and with the overflow of iron golems at the Shake Shack, I decided to make an iron golem farmer. I pretty much spent the rest of the day building the circle platform. You should be proud of me. I didn't mess it up this time. Day 131, I began constructing the farmer. It's honestly a pretty easy, straightforward build. That is until you got to start moving villagers. I figured laying down some rails and building a staircase all the way up to the farm that it should be pretty easy, right? Wrong. <laughs> I needed five villagers up there. I spent the rest of day 131 trying to get two villagers up there. One of them just kept running away and avoiding the minecart entirely. He knew he was going to get locked up there in that bubble for the rest of his life. The other villager was a pretty willing participant. Day 132, I realized you only need two to tango. With these two, I could have them spawn the other three villagers I'm going to need. So 
I started the day off by giving them all the potatoes I had. While they're having a good time up in their perch, I started farming more because, well, I needed more potatoes. <laughs> While waiting for them to populate, I continued to build. I mean, it only took a few more blocks and walls and a little bit of lava, and it was just a waiting game for the last couple villagers to spawn. Day 133, I decided to add a small AFK room to the bottom of the iron farm. I don't know why I did this, considering I try not to AFK as much as I can in these 100 days, but I feel like it makes the farmer look a lot cooler. Honestly, the more I'm doing these blackstone builds, the more I'm starting to like them. Also, the first iron golem spawned, but not really in the right spot. I realized I needed to place some bottom slabs on the top of the AFK box so that the only place that iron golems could spawn is up top in the cage. Now it's working perfectly. Day 134 to 138, we we're definitely on track to hitting our goals for this 100 days. But the next thing on the list is to slay the wither boss. For that, we're going to need to go to another fortress, try to farm as many withers as we can. Luckily, I got a looting two swords, so it shouldn't take that long, right? Oh boy, was I wrong. I slayed wither after wither after wither. I ran around this fortress for four straight days slaying wither skellies. That is until on day 139, I started running a little bit low on food. I knew I was gonna have to return to the overworld soon. But before leaving, I figured I'd try to better my chances with the wither skelly spawns. So I began constructing a giant platform made out of nether bricks. I've used this strategy in the past, so I knew it would work. And finally, finally, on my way out of the nether, I got my first wither skull. I can't believe after all this time, I finally got one. This definitely made me realize that looting too is just not gonna cut it. After returning home, I placed my wither skull on the shelf and made tons of golden carrots to make sure that I wasn't gonna be running out of food anytime soon. Day 140, I decided to try to get looting three on my sword by having a villager sell me a looting book. So I made another lectern, began the process of giving a job, taking it away, all the way up until they finally give me what I want. But like always when dealing with villagers, it just, it's, it takes so long. I was doing this for an entire day before he started selling me looting too. I quickly grabbed my bling bling and equipped it onto my sword, making it looting three. Even though I had looting two and the book is two and two plus two equals four, but that's Minecraft. Day 141 to 143, we're back in the nether. And I'm back to skelly hunting. But luckily, my giant platform strategy was working. Wither skellies were spawning much quicker. It wasn't long before I got my second skull, but then we hit a dry spell. No matter how many wither skellies I clapped, I just could not get that third skull. That is until on day 144 when I noticed another fortress in the distance. I figured it could be pretty refreshing running around a new fortress. Besides, I'd also be able to get some new chests. So I figured I'd zoom on over. After arriving, I ran around looting all the chests that I could find, and it wasn't too long until I started running into wither ske Oh! Yo, I got my last one! New fortress, new me, baby! Now that we got our third skull, it's time to head home. Day 145, we started off by chopping some trees in the chicken forest because I wanted to get some more apples to turn into golden apples before we got to go fight the wither boss. I figured while waiting for the leaves to decay, I could just work on the potato farm. Afterwards, I crafted as many golden apples as I could. Honestly, it wasn't even worth it. I could only make two. And at the end of the day, I noticed, I noticed uh, another chicken suffered from a growing tree. So it was time to make another tombstone. Get another sad day out of these 100 days. But day 146, I started getting a little bit nervous leading up to this wither boss fight. I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna die. So I decided to so I decided to start making some potions of regeneration. But for that, I was gonna need some gas tears. So back to the nether we go. I basically had to fly around playing Ghostbusters in the nether for pretty much the rest of the day and just to be able to even get one gas tier. But one was gonna be enough. So it's time to head home. Day 148, wither clapping day. I spent all morning brewing up all the potions I was gonna need. Luckily, I still got some potions of strength left over from the guardian fight. After brewing potions, it was time. I went down to the mine shaft because I had already had a long tunnel from all the mining I've been doing. All I had to do was clear out a bit of room to construct the wither. I stepped away and drank my potion of strength. After its initial explosion, uh, after its initial explosion, I started unloading arrows into it. After it developed its shield, I popped my potion of regeneration and moved in and started hitting it with my sword. The withering effect was doing some serious damage. Wait, wait, it's, it's over? Already? Maybe I was a little bit too overprepared for this. I even got so caught up that I didn't even realize I still had my elytra on. Eh, whatever, because we got another star now. Day 149, I started off by crafting a new beacon. But I didn't want to just place this beacon onto a regular iron or gold block. Like I said, one of my goals is to make a beacon entirely out of emeralds. Because we about that green green, baby. But for that much green, I was going to need to start doing some serious trades with villagers. But these villager trades take some time. Like, no, like seriously, a lot of time. I spent the next 14 days trading with villagers. I traded everything. Sticks, gold, rotten flesh, anything that could get me emeralds. This was a really long and tedious process. This was a really long and tedious 
tedious process. So I'll just give you a summary so we can just jump through it. Ugh. Day 152, I pretty much turned the last of my wood supply into sticks. So I needed to figure out another good source of emeralds, which then I realized that I could actually sell gold. And so on day 153, I spent the entire day in the nether mining as much gold as I could with my fortune pickaxe. I definitely cashed out and got a lot. Day 153, I realized that one of my villagers buys books for one emerald. I mean, I got a lot of bookshelves from the stronghold, so I began chopping down all that knowledge and turned it into hard cash. Day 156, I fed everyone potatoes because I wanted more villagers for more stonks. Day 157, I remembered that cartographers actually buys glass panes, which that could make a lot of money. So I built an auto smelter in the storage house and started smelting down all the sand I got into glass. Day 159, I finally started running out of books, so I flew over to the stronghold to get more knowledge. Luckily, there's still a few stacks of books in there. Day 160, I went... Day 160. Day 160, I went to the nether and grabbed tons of wood so I could turn it into sticks so that I can continue to make huge profits. That's when I realized I could actually grab some gold out of the bastion. Luckily, I got a pretty easy bastion. I knew where all the hidden gold was in this thing. So I grabbed a few blocks without even having to fight any piggy boys. Day 161, I then sold everything I got in the nether on 160. <laughs> I still think stick trades are the best. You just make so much money off of it. Day 163, I finally got all the blocks that we're going to need for the beacon. Well, give or take a few blocks. I, I might need to do some more trades, but at least I already knew where I was going to build this thing because I had plenty of time to figure it out. I wanted to build a raised platform over near the docks and have a giant emerald beacon just sitting in front of the base. After I constructed the platform, I laid down all the emerald blocks. It was literally a pyramid flex machine. Day 164. I don't really have anything in my notes on this day. I actually think I took a nap. <laughs> hey man, those villager trades are exhausting. Day 165. I started off by adjusting the platform with the beacon because the more I looked at it, the more I'm not really vibing with all that cobblestone. So I started smelting down some rocks so that I can make prettier rocks. Afterwards, I decided to work on the farm. Honestly, it was just kind of a relaxing day and I didn't get much done other than just some household chores. Day 166. I realized that I've been sleeping on my triton. I mean, not literally, but all right, that was a bit of a dad joke. So today's the day I'm gonna enchant it. After taking it to the enchantment table, I managed to get channeling on it. I then used a mending book. Then I remembered that one of my villagers actually sells riptide too. So I grabbed my bling bling and I bought some of that knowledge. But that's when I found out that you couldn't have channeling and riptide at the same time. Honestly, in this ocean world, I'd think I'd rather have riptide. So I ended up actually wasting a mending book and a lot of levels. Yeah, I know. I'm not proud of myself. Afterwards, I threw that thing back on the enchantment table and chose impaling four. But it actually also gave me riptide three, which means I wasted emeralds. On <sighs> Never mind. I then added another mending book, healed it up at the mob grinder, and I pretty much spent the entire day just yeeting that thing in the ocean. But that's when I found out that I could actually throw it and still use my elytra in the air. This actually meant that I wasn't going to be needing fireworks while getting around in the overworld. However, on day 166, I was still going to need fireworks because we're heading back into the nether. Since I wanted to defeat all the bosses in these 100 days, I'm going to have to get some more gas tears so I can be able to make end crystals and then I can be able to revive the dragon. However, I had this not so bright idea of trying to slay the gas with my looting three sword in hopes of getting more tears to drop. Now, this was not only super risky but also not really effective considering that most of the gas are just floating above giant lava lakes anyways so pretty much all the items would just fall right in the lava but luckily with some grinding and some time we managed to get six gas tiers by the end of the day day 168 we're back at home and we're crafting those end crystals i figured that since i still had a potion of strength left over i might as well use it just to nuke the dragon so i grabbed my triton and my elytra and i swam flew through the air and water I, whatever <laughs> after arriving at the end i ran over to the dragon's perch set down those end crystals and began summoning the beast I'm not going to bore you too much with the details. I'll just have my... <laughs> I won't bore you too much with the details. I'll just have Jake, my editor, give you a sick montage of me busting this dragon's cheeks. <sighs> I meant cheeks. Damn it.
day 169. <laughs> Nice. I decided that since I'm getting overran with all these iron golems because of the villagers, I might as well start getting rid of them. The Shake Shack's just getting a little bit too crowded and I need some more room for my villagers. So I literally spent the entirety of day 169 just chopping away at all these iron golems. Day 170, I was getting a little bit curious whether or not I could buy a woodland mansion off of a cartographer. After leveling him all the way up to master, he wouldn't sell me one. Now this is either because there isn't one in this entire world or because he's being a lame boy and just won't give me what I want. I decided to add a little shack in the back of the Shake Shack. <laughs> Sounds weird. So that I can move some villagers in a minecart to transform them into a zombie and then cure them to get better trades. I know there's better ways of doing this, and but come on now, we committed to having a better looking house than a functional house. While waiting for zombies to spawn in the mini shack, I got attacked by an enchanted spider. Honestly, kind of scared the crap out of me, but at the same time, thought it looked pretty amazing. No, hey, look, we actually got two zombies in the shack. Well, I only need one, so goodbye. Day 171. I bought a name tag from my book boy. So thought I could give it to the new zombie. I named him Project, no. Uh, Smelly, no. Uh, the Clapper. <laughs> and then I got him a sword so that he could do some more damage and transform the villagers even faster. Unfortunately, when I tried to give him the sword, though, it got sucked through the ground because of the boat. After retrieving the sword, I gave it back to him carefully this time to make sure his butterfingers can actually get a hold of that thing. Now all I had to do was lay down some rails and push a village in. My cartographer kept avoiding the minecart because he knew it would just mean the end for him. But I had a Fletcher that gladly hopped in to be my first experiment. But after he transformed, he somehow got knocked out of the cart and put in the boat with the clapper. I mean, I guess I could just leave him there so it won't happen again. A worthy sacrifice. Day 172, I sent another Fletcher in to get zombified because I was hoping that it would reset his trades. But I'm dumb and that's not how it works. After he became a smelly boy, all the villagers ran to the opposite side of the house. And then they started crying around the door making it hard for me to get out don't worry guys i'm gonna clean him but like i said i'm pretty dumb and i didn't know that it wouldn't reset their trades so i also sent in my cartographer to get zombified later on i walked back in to check on the villagers and my zombie fletcher had vanished somehow he actually managed to fall through the floor so i grabbed the brown pearl and swooped him back up but he wouldn't cooperate with me when i was trying to get him to go home for some reason he just kept going back to my blast furnace and using it like a fletching table god i honestly hate villagers sometimes after finally getting my Fletcher home, it turned out that the cartographer also fell through the floor. But like I said, it didn't reset his trades and I wasted a lot of time. Day 173, I did what I should have did. I did what I should have done from the start, which is just make more villagers so then I can have more jobs. So I was just making it rain on potatoes for everybody. While waiting for the villager babies to grow up, I started working on the base a bit. Like one of the things is I added some more armor stands in the bedroom so I could start showing off all the types of armors I got. And of course, I enchanted some and wasted a couple of levels just so they could look cooler day 174 we're being taken over by the iron golems again but also one of the kids got a little too close to the clapper but one of the other ones grew up and became a cartographer so i began leveling him up and selling him paper and glass in hopes that i'd be able to get that woodland mansion map unfortunately it didn't happen i'm pretty sure it's just because this world unfortunately doesn't have one even though i've seen those things spawn on giant towers of cobblestone before day 175 i was doing a bit of research on pillagers because i realized that we haven't had any spawn in this world yet it turned turned out that they could spawn pretty much in any biome, but as long as they're a certain distance away from the player. So I grabbed a bunch of cobblestone and created this platform not too far away from the base so I could better my odds of getting them to spawn. Day 176. Oh my god, I've been waiting to get to this point. I thought it's been a while since we've done some traveling, so I decided now that we got the elytra, we could get some pretty good distance going. I hopped in the nether and started flying until I found a pretty big fortress where I was burned by a blaze and reminded that I wasn't welcome. So I decided to make a portal and leave and we even managed to get that hubble space bubble achievement because we actually ended up going about eleven thousand blocks away from home so i set off oh, and nope never mind i forgot to put on my elytra <laughs> now we're off so a little backstory originally on this adventure i wanted to try to find an island big enough that maybe it can have some dirt and grass blocks it just kind of turned into me getting lost at sea and trying my best to survive for the next 14 days i managed to find a lot of tiny islands a lot on this adventure but nothing big enough that'll have a grass block all the islands were just tiny baby islands at the end of day 179 eh, but on uh, but, then, uh, uh, but at the end of day 179 i found the biggest island yet it was shaped kind of like a giant square this was honestly 
honestly one of the most exciting things that happened while I was out on this adventure. I was also running a little bit low on food. I was down to my last 10 potatoes. Worst comes to worst, I know I could just loot a ship or go fishing, but being lost at sea was definitely taking its toll on me. I'd catch myself dozing off while recording this at 1 a.m. Don't sleep and fly on hardcore mode, kids. And on day 180, I managed to find another pretty large island. After finding this island, I was coming to terms with the fact that if there's an island this big that doesn't have a grass block, I don't think any island will. I left, but then I realized it was getting dark. <sighs> but by the time I turned back around to go sleep on the island, a ton of mobs spawned. But hey, I figured this could be pretty fun, take a break from flying and start hacking away at all the mobs. But their numbers kept growing and I realized that I'm just taking up too much damage and losing a lot of food. So I chose to find a different island to sleep at. Day 185, I was running pretty low on fireworks. So I figured I should start using my Triton to get around. Honestly, this was way more fun and I don't know why I wasn't doing it from the start. But I managed to find another decent sized island and this time there was a cave. I figured it was worth double checking on the inside to try to find a grass block. Honestly, I was just getting a bit desperate and spoiler alert, there wasn't any grass block. And on day 188, the most exciting day of this entire trip, I managed to find another exposed stronghold. I figured that since I'm completely out of food and losing my mind flying around, I might as well just take a break from traveling, go loot this thing. After, run after running out of books, turning all in to emeralds i figured hey it might as well just you know clear out this library day 190 i actually found a tiny island a very familiar tiny island one that i'm pretty sure i found in the first 100 days so i left into the direction that i think my home would be and to my surprise it was we finally found home oh my god i was so excited i immediately start cooking potatoes day 191 i felt pretty eager to build something after that long adventure but i didn't want to just build anything i wanted to build a monument to commemorate these last 100 days so the first thing i was going to need was a wither skull which i literally got from my second wither it just kills me how how random these things are I'm rambling. Day 192, I'll be honest, I got a late start to the day. <laughs> but the next stop was gonna be the end. So I made my way into the stronghold, hopped into the portal, and I was gonna need to grab an ender dragon head from the end ship that I got my elytra. I honestly don't know why I didn't grab this the last time I came. Either way, after arriving at the end ship, I realized that there wasn't a dragon head. I was a bit confused, but I spent the rest of the day passing by end city after end city, trying to find another ship. That is until on day 193. We got ourselves a ship. I boarded that bad boy and grabbed all the diamond gear out of the chest as well as the elytra oh and of course the dragon's head because that's what we're here for luckily there was also a portal nearby so i was able to make it home pretty easily you might be wondering why the uh, screen's black for day 194 and 195 uh that's because i literally mined <laughs> that's because i literally shuffled so much sand and cooking it all up to make glass for this monument i mean do you really want to see me do that again day 196 to 199 and i spent constructing this beautiful monument in front of the base i wanted something to look at that i can remember these last 100 days and everything that we've achieved and yes i used a sponge for the elder guardian instead of a fish because then i would have needed an item frame and that would have been ugly and on day 200 b-roll day recap all the things that we've built in these last 100 days day 201 we're getting a little bit of a late start to the day but we're starting off these 100 days right by exiling our cartographer that's been freeloading in the brown pearl afterwards i figured i'd continue to do all the normal household essentials like clearing up the mob grinder looting the iron farm wow that's actually a lot of iron and clearing out the sugarcane farm i figured i'd turn all these iron ingots into a bunch of iron blocks oh and a lot of people are asking about chickpea is he even still alive well yeah of course he is he's He's right over. He's he's right. Where the heck is he? Oh, there he is. Yeah, see, he's still alive and well. Day 202, I started off by feeding all my villagers some delicious potatoes. But that's only because I was trying to get on their good side because some of them are gonna get zombified soon. Some of you guys were actually commenting down below that I could get a Fletcher to buy one stick for one emerald. Now that is some stonks I'm interested in. After sending my first villager in to get clapped, the Iron Golems made sure that he had zero chance of survival. Yeah, this Iron Golem problem's getting real old. So I spent the rest of day 202 just chopping them all down. Day 203. Since we're down a couple villagers, I decided to start off the day by giving everyone even more potatoes. Then I realized my shovel wasn't even enchanted for some reason. I've been shoveling tons of sand without efficiency. I know I'm pretty disappointed too. So I slapped that thing on the enchantment table and got some OP enchants. Afterwards, I decided to fly over to the spider spawner farm since I'm blowing through all my levels. Even though I'm trying to get to level 100 in these next 100 days. After arriving at the spider spawner farm, I decided to AFK for the rest of the day and let a bunch of spiders just build up. And trust me, it was worth it. 
it because on day 204 there was just a giant pile of spiders it's always satisfying chopping through these things but i honestly didn't even get that many levels and it doesn't seem like the spider spawner farm's cutting it anymore after flying home i decided i should make an enderman farm now, i've only done this thing once before because it's honestly really terrifying but if i was going to make an enderman farm i was going to need a bunch of tree leaves to turn it tree leaves to use as building blocks so i grabbed a bunch of bone meal and started bone meal and a bunch of trees that is until chicken 102 got suffocated <sighs> now i have to make another tombstone the chicken forest is quickly turning into a chicken graveyard because while i was setting up the tombstone for chicken 102 i accidentally smushed chicken 98 into a tree <laughs> So now I gotta set up another one. Honestly, I don't know how much more of this I could take. Day 205, I went back to gathering all the leaves I would need for the Enderman farm. It's always satisfying gathering leaves until your shears keep breaking. I went through three pairs of shears before I remembered that my villager sells an unbreaking three book. So I bought some of that big brain knowledge and combined it with my shears to make really OP shears that won't die. Anytime soon, that is. Afterwards, I pretty much just spent the remainder of the day just giving my trees some haircuts. Day 206, my chicken forest was looking like a barren waste land so i decided to start off the day just chopping down all the naked trees now that that's out of the way time to continue gathering all the things i would need for this enderman farm things like glass from the storage room cobblestone from the mines make some chests and some carpets now that we're all stocked up and loaded it's time to go on an adventure now this farm did take me about four days to make <laughs> That's primarily because I'm a huge chicken and this is really terrifying and I didn't want to fall in the void. I mean, come on, bobbing up and down in the water over the void is pretty terrifying. Then afterwards, I got to bridge out like 200 blocks to make a platform for all the endermen to spawn. My pinky was cramping. I was crouching the entire time. But that wasn't even the worst part. After constructing the entire thing, I had to spawn an endermite by throwing a bunch of pearls on the ground. After throwing a bunch of pearls on the ground, I put a name tag on it so it wouldn't despawn. Yes, I named it Small Boy. But then Small Boy tried to run away from me then refused to get in the minecart. I had no other choice but to slay small boy, fly all the way back home, buy another name tag. This time I wouldn't mess it up, except for the fact that I ran out of pearls, so I had to slay a bunch of endermen just to get some more pearls. But then I finally got an endermite to spawn. Small boy 2.0. Then finally this enderman farm became fully functional. While waiting for all the endermen to spawn, I figured I'd make a long tunnel so that I could make it safely all the way over to the farmer. This farmer definitely gives me a lot of good XP, but I'm gonna be needing a sweeping edge sword. So on day 211, I started off the day by crafting a new diamond sword, which I'd be enchanting, trying to get sweeping edge. It only took a couple tries and we managed to get it. So I flew back over to the Enderman farm. So, hold on, slow down, slow, slow down. Oh my God. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be flying all the way over to this thing. I pretty much AFK'd for most of the day, letting tons of Endermen pile up into the farm until eventually it was time to start chopping them down. Man, sweeping edge is OP. But the farm honestly didn't give me that much XP. I don't think I built it correctly. I pretty much just got all the levels back from enchanting my sword. Yeah, I'll worry about it later. Day 212. I decided I wanted to build an auto potato farm because I'm getting pretty tired of having to dig up and replant every single one of these things. But for that, I'm going to need some dirt and lots of it. So I went down to the mines and got some. Afterwards, I pretty much just spent the rest of the day preparing the farm, digging it up and extending it outward. Day 213 to 217. Okay, this farm definitely took me way longer than I wanted it to. For some reason, I kept getting doo-doo brain and I was convinced that I was going to need some pistons to get water flowing to stop and flow and stop i kept building it up and breaking it down over and over until i finally realized on day 216 that i can actually use dispensers with water buckets in them but i needed to head over to the spider spawner farm get all that string that i've been leaving there to make bows so that i can make dispensers but it was worth it because after filling up all my buckets and loading them into the dispensers and hooked it all up with some redstone and a lever Oh, wow, that felt amazing. Ugh, that felt weird. It turned out amazing. All that was left is to load up the farm with a bunch of potatoes and let them grow. Day 218, I wanted to do some villager transforming. Transforming, transforming. Honestly, I need to come up with a better solution to getting rid of all these iron golems because this is just taking way too long. After chopping them all down, I started sending some villagers into the transformation room. I wanted to try my hand again at getting that OP Fletcher trade. That's kind of all I really have in my notes for this day, so it doesn't sound like a very productive day. Day 218. 19 oh look my villagers transformed but they also fell through the floor again so i grabbed the brown pearl and swooped him up after luring him all the way back to the shake shack he took the fletching job but didn't have the right stick trade i figured maybe he needed to go another round in the transformation room afterwards i figured i'd go pick up my other villager that fell through the floor after getting him back i figured i'd send him into the transformation room as well why not 
this time before transforming them back into villagers, I figured I'd put some slabs underneath the Shake Shack so that they would stop falling through the floor. Day 220, we're starting it off in the nether. I was running a bit low on gold because of all these villager transformations, so I figured I'd put that Fortune 3 to use and get some nuggies. When I got back, I crafted up all my gapples and went in and wait. Wait, did the iron golem seriously kill all my zombie villagers? These guys are getting so annoying. Basically, for the rest of the day, I just raged and tried shortening the roof in the Shake Shack so that hopefully they'll stop spawning. But then when I came to my senses, I realized I'd just be ruining the beauty of the Shake Shack. So I tore down all the slabs. Day 221. Ah, Z day. My least favorite day ever. I realized it would be easier for me to just widen the transformation room. Maybe I could try to move the clapper over a little bit so that when I transform my villagers, they can just stay in the room until I cure them i figured i would test this out by sending in another villager and just blocking them in but later on i returned to go check on my villager and they had all turned into zombies i heard the sounds of villagers screaming so i instinctively started swinging on all the zombie villagers then i realized wait no i actually still need them when i looked through the window i realized it was too late everyone had become a zombie that is except for one but he did his best to get away but he just couldn't there was too many of them <laughs> can't believe this happened day 222 i needed a break from minecraft but i also forgot that i left it open so there's not much to say about this day day 223 started off just like any other day i cleaned out the sugar cane farm surprisingly there's a lot of bamboo in there i made my way over to the mob grinder that's when i noticed my farmer is gone i thought maybe he climbed over the dispensers and jumped over the edge but after zooming around in the water for a bit i couldn't find him i think a zombie must have spawned and turned him into a zombie and then he burned up while i was afk Yep, that's exactly what happened. Well, either way, it was time to fully test out this potato farm. It looks like it works for the most part, so I'll just call that a success. Afterwards, I also realized that my food chest is getting a little full, but I would have to rearrange my kitchen to make it a double wide chest. And because my inventory is filled up, I also had tons of food all over the floor, and I basically just made a giant mess, and I spent the rest of the day cleaning it all up. Day 224, I got a late start to the day. Like, like a really late start. It's about time I start dealing with all those zombie villagers. The only thing is that I left all my golden apples inside of a chest in the shake shack luckily i was able to break through the wall and get them pretty easily i also found out that the villager i left inside the transformation room is still safe that's about all i got done on day 224 day 225 i was gonna need a lot of golden apples for all these villagers so i chopped down all the trees to get a few more apples while i was still brew uh, while i was brewing up some ugh, while i was brewing up some new potions of weakness luckily i was able to get all the villagers into one big group so i only needed one potion after feeding everyone their apples i snuck out and it was just a waiting game I came back to check on them a little bit later, and that's when I realized the Fletcher transformed. But he was definitely going to get clapped by all those zombies, so I hopped in to distract them all. It seemed like me running around in circles to distract all the zombies was going to be the only was the only way to distract all the zombies. And finally, after a bunch of laps around the Shake Shack, everyone was cured. I was finally able to take my villager out of the transformation room, and since I lost a bunch of villagers during this process, it was potato time. Day 226, I decided to work on another layer on the mob grinder, but for that, I was going to need a lot of cobblestone. So I basically spent all of the day of 226 in the mine day 227 to 230 i thought this would be an easy project but i forgot the original roof on this thing was made out of slabs which was throwing off the entire second layer then i got ahead of myself and made the roof before designing the entire inside which was a huge mistake because then i, I didn't have enough room for things to spawn and so i had to tear down the entire roof again in reality it was just a lot of human error but i still managed to get the job done now the mob grinder's looking nice and thick day 231 i was testing out the newly thickened mob grinder and i realized a lot of mobs weren't surviving the fall so i raised up the platform a bit to help all the weak boys that keep dying seems like it's working a lot better now afterwards i realized i didn't even check to see which villagers survived so i went over and realized that my mending trader was gone so i spent the rest of day 227 firing and rehiring my book boy until he started selling me mending again Ugh. day 232 i didn't want to risk losing all my villagers again so i figured i would start lighting up the shake shack a bit by adding a giant chandelier right in the middle of the room and you know you boys gonna slap some lanterns on that thing it looks so good possibly swap them out for some soul lanterns in the future maybe day 233 i set off to go to the wait wait hold on the mob grinder is full ever since adding the new layer on this thing it's working pretty well all right now we're heading over to the end because i wanted to try to hit level 50 and i wasn't gonna leave until i did that took about two days but while waiting for all these endermen to spawn i created like a little room out of glass and it's like the perfect distance away so that it maximizes the amount of spawning i pretty much just kept hitting endermen then working on the bridge 
hitting Enderman, working on the bridge. And I just did that over and over. Honestly, I was kind of disappointed with this farm. I don't know what I did wrong with this, but definitely something went wrong when building it. But eventually, we finally got level 50 on day 235. Day 236, I was back at home. And I want to build another chicken forest, chicken forest 2.0. And this time, of course, I'm going to use some different saplings. And yes, I, I had to dig up the uh, the chicken graves and move them, it was, but it was for a good cause, of course. I built a night, I built another giant circle for the new forest so that my chickens could stop being crammed all the time. And yes, I took my time on this one. When you're building a circle this big, you don't want it to end up lopsided. Day 237, I started off the day by using all the dirt I had to fill in the new giant circle. But unfortunately, the circle was too big and too strong, and I pretty much ran out of dirt halfway through. So I had no other choice but to go down in the mines to get some dirt, since dirt isn't that easy to get in the ocean. After mining around for a while, I found a couple of huge patches of dirt. So I managed to fill up the giant circle for the chickens. Look how excited they are already. God, I love just seeing all my happy little chicken sandwiches. Day 238, we started off the day by making a bunch of fences for the chicken forest 2.0. I don't want any of my chickens getting lost at sea again. Afterwards, I began planting all my saplings. Look, acacia is better than... Acacia is the only other sapling I have, and it's definitely better than birch. I don't care what anyone says. And now I finally have all this room to be able to unload all my chicken eggs that I've been holding on to. Day 239, I figured it was time I'd give it another shot at trying to get the OP Fletcher trades. Now, like I said, I've done little to no research on how to actually get these trades. I figured the best method would probably be just forcefully sending my Fletcher into the transformation room and seeing what happens. Oh God, I ran out of breath on that sentence. After successfully trapping him in there, I cleansed him of his demons and played the waiting game until he turned into a normie again. <clears throat> but while waiting, I decided it would be a good idea to create another auto farm. This farm is going to be an exact replica of the sugarcane farm. But instead of sugarcane, it's going to be bamboo. So that I can actually turn them all into sticks when I get that sweet trade. So I finished off the rest of day 239 by building the new circle platform. Day 240 to 241. I began construction on the bamboo farmer. Like I said, it's going to be an exact replica of the sugarcane farm. But that won't stop <laughs> But that won't stop me from making mistakes. After a couple human errors here and there, we had ourselves a fully functional bamboo farmer. I can't wait to get rich off this thing. Day 242, it's time to let my villager out. He's been sitting in there for a little while. Apparently, since I didn't lock in his trades, the Fletcher wouldn't give me that sweet discount that I wanted. So I figured maybe after a couple more rounds with the clapper in the transformation room, then maybe he'll give me the trades that I'm looking for. But this time, my zombies weren't really interested in him. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. But after checking back later, it looks like they got hungry enough. Day 243, time to give our Fletcher a ba bath again. This time he's actually giving me a pretty solid deal. 14 sticks for one emerald. So it seems like the more he gets clapped, the better the deals get. So maybe just one more round with the clapper and then we'll be getting those OP trades. But I'm also running out of apples. So it's time to start chopping down some trees. While playing Lumberjack Simulator, I noticed there's a lot of chickens hanging out in the acacia forest. Must like it because it's new. Day 244, my Fletcher's cured again. And this time he's buying eight sticks for one emerald. I know I said I was only going to send him in one more time but I mean, <laughs> I want the best deal possible. But this time I was completely out of gold. So I had to go into the nether to go find a fresh bastion to get looted. After finding a fresh bastion, it actually turned out to be treasure. Pretty easy bastion to get a lot of gold. And I know where all the secret gold is in this thing. But unfortunately, there wasn't really that much secret gold. So that left me with no other choice but to get all the gold down in the middle of the bastion. That's being heavily guarded by slime. So, yeah, all right, yep, yeah, and all right, they're dead. And since I'm not bad, I decided to build a little house around myself so I could be able to mine all the gold in peace and just wait for them to stop getting being mad at me. Day 245, we're back at home and we finally got a freshly cured villager. Bad news is though, he inflated his prices for some reason. At this point, I wanted to give up, but I just, but I decided to try send him in, ugh, try send him in one more time. Boy, was that a mistake. But for now, while waiting for him to be purified, I went over to the potato farm and washed all them potatoes because I realized I could start cooking up tons of these potatoes and get a bunch of XP for taking them all out of the furnace. So after setting up some new fern eyes, I realized I was going to need some coal. 
So I pretty much just spent the rest of day 245 just mining. Day 246, it's time to check on our test subject. Looks like he's buying 20 sticks for emeralds. Now at this point, I should have just called it quits and accepted the trades, but I tried to send him in one more time. Just, just one more time, just got a little too greedy. But then I got the zombie boat stuck in the minecart. If you aren't familiar with this glitch, basically it permanently gets stuck in the minecart. There's nothing you could do. I have no other choice but to break the boat and the minecart. But before breaking it, I went and made a new boat just in case to have on hand. And when I got back, one of my zombies was dead because it rolled into the corner and got suffocated. <clears throat> Which is now a completely new issue because when my villager gets zombified, he jumps out of the minecart and gets in the boat. So by this point, I pretty much gave up all hopes. The legendary stick trade was lost. Instead, I decided to turn all my bamboo into sticks and just do all the normal trades, thinking of what could have been. <laughs> Day 247, I decided to go back to the Enderman farm and sulk in my sadness. I sat there all day just chopping away at the Enderman, trying to collect as much XP as I can. Day 248, it was time for me to stop getting distracted. What the? Oh, getting distracted by all my failures and start building something awesome. I decided that I should start working on my mines. It's been an ugly mess down there, and I've just been trying to avoid it as much as possible. But I'm also going to keep it consistent and use a bunch of blackstone. But not long after the construction, I realized I needed a whole lot more bla blackstone. Like, like a lot of it. So on day 249, that's exactly what I did. I went and got a whole lot of Blackstone. Day 250 to 255, halfway through the 100 days, and I'm still just being a legend, making cool builds, and ignoring my goals until the last minute. I basically spent the next five days just working on this mine shaft. The most time-consuming part definitely was the staircase. Going all the way down that thing just took forever, but it was all worth it, because I mean, look, oh, wait a second. I missed a spot, though. But yeah, so as I was saying, though, I think this place looks pretty awesome. I'm definitely happy with the way it turned out. Day 256, I decided it was time I needed to make a true overpowered experience farmer well it's also a gold farm but i'm gonna have to collect a lot of things for it starting with some turtle eggs i remember that there was an island near spawn that had some turtles on it so now i just gotta get them all hot and heavy and then steal their babies we curse you and your hundred dead Next thing I was going to need is some magma blocks. But magma blocks hurt. Normally they spawn next to lava. So I figured I'd be safe and brew up some fire resistance potions. Day 257. Remember how I said I was going to need magma blocks? Well, I spent the entire day getting some. So there's not too much to talk about here other than how satisfying it is to break these blocks. Day 258. All I needed now was to gather all the last items I would need for this huge farm. I needed a bunch of scaffolding, lots of cobble, and tons of slabs. And lots of other things, but honestly, I'm not entirely certain why this day felt like a flu by oh well day 259 it's time to set off to the end because wait end how do i fly all the way over to the end portal Great, now I gotta fly all the way back and go to the nether portal. All right, now that we went through the right portal this time, I made a staircase all the way up to the roof of the nether because I'm gonna have to find the perfect block to pearl through. Luckily, I've done this plenty of times, so I immediately knew the block when I saw it. I pearled through it and set up an escape portal because last thing I wanna do is get stuck up here on the roof. <laughs> Day 260 to 270. I spent 10 whole days working on this farm. I've never even tested this thing before. I was just following a guide that I found on YouTube, which I'll have it linked down below if you guys want to build this thing yourself. All I know is that this thing is massive and looks super effective. And while building it, I was even thinking about all the different things that I could change about it and make it even more OP. But for now, I'll just finish it up and start leveling up. Day 271. Now that we have a fully completed farm, it's time to put this thing to work. I AFK'd for most of the day and worked on the AFK room a bit making it a little bit more effective and comfortable but honestly this farm's insane i started getting so many levels but i actually wanted to <laughs> but i actually wanted to stop at a specific level <laughs> nice before we actually go home day 272 i wanted to take a bit of a break from all the farms that i've been working on and i decided to start working on the base a bit i wanted to work on the outer rings of all the circle platforms and try to build kind of like a wall around it i wanted to try to prioritize doing all the main areas of the base first and honestly i'm really vibing with this staggered pattern of just kind of it being mismatched and misshaped i think it fits to the aesthetic of the base really well day 273 i i actually realized it was day 273 i'm running out of time and still got a lot of things i gotta do so i decided to fly back to the zombie piglin farmer after that much needed break because honestly it still is the best xp farmer i've made so far although the xp is rolling in I still need to make it a bit quicker. So I started brainstorming different ways to get more zombie piglins to start falling. That's when I realized while flying up to the top that whenever I'm on top, just tons of piglins start spawning. So I decided to test it and I waited at the top while tons of piglins start piling down that hole so that when I'd fly down, there would be a ton of XP waiting for me. And boy, there was, there was a ton. 
Now that I figured out this fast track way of getting an insane amount of XP, this is gonna make it much easier for me. So for the next two days, I pretty much just continue to fly up and down on this thing, getting zombie piglins to spawn, fly all the way down, collect all the XP, and I just did this over and over. But on day 274, I discovered a new problem. There were way too many items falling. All the swords and rotten flesh started backing up in the hoppers. I didn't really design this thing to handle this many items, but honestly, it's not really something I'm gonna worry about right now. So I just kept dropping all the items all the way down to the floor and hoping that they would just despawn. Day 275. I was AFK for a bit too long this time because when I flew down, there was so much XP, I started lagging like crazy. And on top of that, there was a piglin waiting outside my door. Luckily, I'm from the hood, so I handled him pretty quick. And I started chugging down all that XP, so my FPS started climbing. But so was my levels. I finally got level 100. Oh, and also remember all that trash I dumped down there? Yeah, when I started burning it all, I accidentally burned down my scaffolding and, yeah, and that happened. Either way, discovering this new method for XP made it possible for me to achieve my final giant project. So on day 276, we're back at home. But not for long though, because I need to gather a lot of resources. And by a lot of resources, I just mean tons of sand. Don't worry, you'll find out soon what all this sand is for. But on day 276, I thought it would be a good idea to shovel all my sand with an underwater breathing potion. And yeah, honestly, that was kind of slow. I'm a little disappointed. I thought that would be a good idea. So on day 277, I decided to rob some little islands of all their sand. Shoveling it above ground was way easier. And I don't know, I was... And honestly, I don't know why I didn't think about doing this sooner. Day 278. All right, it's time I tell you what all that sand was for. Well, like I said in the beginning of this video, I wanted to make something each 100 days to commemorate how awesome it was. And for this 100 days, I decided to make a giant volcano because there's all these really cool underwater volcanoes in this world that I've just been thinking about building up and completing. So I spent the remainder of this 100 days on this massive project. I've never really terraformed something this big, let alone doing it all underwater. So this was a crazy challenging project for me. While trying to avoid drowning and literal drowns, it was a struggle to say the least. Oh, and also guys, comment down below a name for this volcano island. The most liked comment will be the winner, and then I'll also put a sign in the next 100 days of what that name is. But for now, back to the building. On day 288, I finally got my first block above the water. Oh my god, it felt accomplishing. And once it was above the water, it was such an... Ugh, the process just got way, way better. And by day 291, all of it was above the water. And then even by day 299, it was completed. And all that's left is to build a giant flat layer on the inside. Because I want to add a lot of lava, of course. I want it to look like it's active. But by the time I finished filling this whole thing in, it was day 200. And I still needed to get all my lava. So I was cutting it pretty close. So I built another portal on the volcano island so that I could just run tons of buckets in there and scoop up tons of lava and come back and just dump all those buckets. And I did this back and forth a couple times until it was finally done and just in time because it was turning nighttime, which is perfect for some nighttime B-roll of all the things that we've accomplished in this last 100 days. Day 301, we're back on the grind. And speaking of grind, I'm, I noticed the mob grinder's getting a little bit full. But on my way over to the mob grinder, I heard some footsteps coming from the house. Turned out to be a traveling merchant. Been a long time since I've seen one of these guys. I was hoping that maybe he'd be selling some podzel, pod, podzel, podzel. I don't know how to say it. Regardless, the dookie grass. Which of course, because I'm the luckiest Minecrafter alive, he didn't sell that. But he was selling some ice, which I can actually use in the nether for some fast travel later. So I bought as much as I could, which wasn't very much. So I'm gonna have to wait for his cooldown. I also bought and planted a new flower for chickpea. Speaking of chickpea, it's about time I hold up my end of the bargain. In my last 300 days of ocean survival, I said the most liked comment in that video would be able to name the actual volcano I made in 300 days. And that name is Mount Chickpea by Dubstep2009. This name was honestly suggested a lot, but nonetheless, I flew all the way over to the volcano and dubbed the mountain chickpea. And I dubbed it Mount Chickpea. Afterwards, I realized it would only be suiting to be able to actually take chickpea all the way to the mountain and i know a lot of people are getting worried about him dying in the chicken forest anyway so i wrangled him up and threw him in the brown pearl and set sail after arriving i wasn't going to just leave him stranded naturally i don't want him to just float out in the ocean so i built him a little chair so that he could be able to stay safe but the sun was setting and it was time to say my goodbyes so i went home and slept day 302 i started off the day by cleaning out the mob grinder finally to be honest this thing really sucks compared to the one i made in the void world video so definitely gonna be working on this thing later on but for now i'll just at least set up 
up some chests and some hoppers to clean up the mob loot. Speaking of mob grinder though, I got a lot of mob trash that I could actually just turn into stonks. So I grabbed all my rotten flesh so that I could be able to sell it and get some of that green because I want to try to buy more ice off the wandering trader. But he's trying to sneak away from paradise. So I boated all the way over to him just to find out that he's still not selling any ice. And for that, I decided to take one of his llamas. This llama will now also be the captain of the brown pearl. So naturally I was going to give him a name tag, but I found out that none of my librarians that survive Z Day sell any name tags. So I figured with some quick paper trades, I'd be able to level him up in no time. But like always, I'm trying to get the best deal. So I sent my librarian in the transformation room to get clapped. But again, the iron golems are spawning like crazy. So I finished off the day by cleaning out the house. Day 303, I returned to the Shake Shack to find my librarian not zombified and in fact, just suffocating in the wall. Turns out the minecart merged with the boat and my zombie Fletcher that was inside the boat apparently got suffocated in the wall as well. If there's one thing I'm certain of, it's that I'm getting pretty tired of dealing with this villager setup. But for now, back to leveling up my librarian and he didn't sell me name tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and give up on trying to name the llama for now. And instead I began building a new giant platform that I was gonna use for the new villager house because it's about time I make an OP villager transformation room trading hall thing. But after a bit of building, I was running low on materials and most importantly, the sun was going down. So on day three or four, it was time to go down to the mines. But first I figured maybe I'll grab the beacon because I thought it'd be a good idea to be able to use some haste while I'm mining. That is until I got down there and set up the beacon and I forgot that it needs to be able to have direct access to sunlight. Anyways, after a bit of mining, I realized I could use some sticky pistons for this build. It would actually come in handy. But the only way to be able to get slimes in this world is to find a slime chunk below Y level 40. And I figured since I needed some stone and the easiest way to find slime chunks would be to just mine out a giant area, I figured I would use all of day 305 mining as well. Day 306, we're finally on the surface and breathing some fresh air. It's finally time to finish building this platform. And luckily, when I'm building in fast forward mode like this, it's super easy. Afterwards, I figured I'd check on the wandering tree trader to see if he'll finally sell me more ice and he didn't and for that he's gonna pay with his life day 307 looked out the window and realized i forgot to put my beacon back after doing that it was time to build the new villager trading hall i wanted to try to keep it to the blackstone theme that i've been doing for all my builds so i spent the entire day just building up a simple floor plan that is until i realized the blocks were flipped and i used basalt as the accent block instead of using it as the main block i mean i could live with it but uh, honestly no I, I i can't that's a lie it, it just looks terrible so i started tearing it all down but i also realized i only had enough basalt to cover the entire front at least it's looking better day 308 i made my way down to the mines in hopes of maybe a slime spawning but honestly there was just a bunch of baddies down there and after giving them the hands i figured i'd extend the tunnel a bit afterwards i made my way into the nether and mined tons of basalt like <laughs> like a lot of basalt because this is gonna be a pretty big house i also spent most of day 309 punching rocks day 310 to 321 now this this was a very long and tedious process so it better pay out i'll also try to summarize it and make it as quick as possible for you guys. I tore down all the blackstone and replaced it with basalt. It's already looking a lot better. Then I thought it'd be a pretty cool idea to start doing a pattern on the wall. So I spent all of day 311 on that. I just pretty much experimented with the design a little bit and until I came up with this really cool looking pattern. Day 312, spent the day experimenting with pistons. And I realized it would work totally fine without the sticky pistons. So all that mining for a slime chunk's kind of for not. Day 313 and 314. I dug out a trench inside the house where I'm going to have the clapper running around and started preparing all the locations for my villagers to stand on pistons. It's honestly not turning out too pretty, but I'm sure it'll work fine. At the end of day 315, I was interrupted by a zombie that spawned in the Shake Shack that was trying to get a late night snack on all my villagers. Luckily, we only had one casualty, so that wasn't too bad. On day 316, I brewed up some potions of weakening and then fed him the golden apples so that he'd be able to turn back into a villager. And now back to the villager trading hall. I spent the rest of the day 316 finishing up with all the pistons that I was going to need for all the villagers. But to do that, I was gonna need to chop down some trees because I ran out of wood. Day 317, all the pistons were finally set up and it didn't seem like I really got too much done today. I pretty much just worked on the interior a bit until it was the end of the day and I realized that my zombie transformed and fell through the floor like always. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to experiment. So on day 318, I lured my librarian out of the water and tried to get him into the trading hall. That is until he just ran back into the Shake Shack. But that's the beauty of minecarts. So I forced him to take a ride right over to his forever hole. I mean, I mean home. But like all always he wasn't really working with me and the sun was setting so after a quick nap on day 319 i wrangled him into his home and i was testing out the piston 
It looks like it's functioning totally fine. Afterwards, I spent the rest of the day moving over all the villagers I was going to need for all my trade. Day 320. But it was time to move the clapper. And since it's daylight and I can't have him running around naked, so I gave him some clothes to protect himself from the sun. Afterwards, I prepared the tunnel that I was going to have to lure him into and run through. And with everything set up, the chase began. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. I'm not going to try to make it dramatic. But shortly after getting him stuck, his helmet broke. And now this is dramatic, and it started making me panic. I even almost gave him my netherite helmet. Luckily, right before doing that, I realized I had a water bucket. So I splashed him in the face and cooled him off. But that's also when I realized that zombies were taller than two blocks, which completely ruined the design of this farm. I was using trapdoors to prevent the villagers from running out of their little holes. So on day 321, I gave the clapper a fresh iron helmet and then had the realization that I could just use slabs above the trapdoors so the clapper can freely roam around in his trench and then my villagers can't escape. So it was time to finally test it out. I sent my librarian down and popped him back up as a zombie and it actually worked. So that paid off. Honestly, I'm a little bit impressed, but I was also going to need some golden apples. So I went to go chop down some trees and get some more and then finished off the day by curing my librarian. Day 322 to 323. Continue to work on the trading hall and I decided to call it the trader tower because I wanted to turn it into a giant skyscraper full of hard workers even though it's kind of just turning into a giant prison but at the end of day 323 before going to bed I noticed there was something out in the water well something other than just my banished cartographer and it turned out to be a bee which kind of confused me because I didn't think I would be able to get a bee in this world that is until I looked over at my tree farm and noticed that when one of my oak trees grew it spawned a beehive which apparently is only like a two percent chance of that ever even happening so on day 324 i went over to the brown pearl just to find out that captain llama was gone so that, that was a little bit disappointing it didn't really make any sense but i didn't have much time because i gotta go save a bee from getting lost in the ocean after putting him on a lead i drug him all the way back home to his nest after returning home one of the bees with some butter on his butt tried to escape so i realized i should probably grab some glass and block it off with a flower in there because i didn't really have time to deal with them just yet i'll i'll, I'll make them a better enclosure later day 325 to 330 i expanded the trader tower a lot like four floors a lot which expanding it wasn't really the hardest thing i just had this bright idea of trying to mirror the pattern all the way at the bottom which i thought would look pretty cool and it did but it was a ton of work and it took way too much time going all the way down and up trying to remember how it looked and then the last thing i had to do was slap a roof on it and do a bit of accent and honestly i kind of like how big and intimidating this thing is also at the end of day 330 to celebrate the success of the build i figured why not and i zombified my librarian again that is until i realized i still don't have any apples so on day 331 I decided it's time to invest into another farmer so I could just buy some apples and not have to chop down all the trees since I'm going to be need a lot of these things for all the transformations I'm going to be doing. After selling him some potatoes just to lock in his trades, it was time to ship him off to the trading hall. But like always, he wasn't cooperating with me because he knew his fate was that he was going to become a zombie. That or he just really didn't like the hole I was putting him in because he kept running into a different one. Either way, it works for me. I mean, as long as he's sitting in a hole, it doesn't matter. After blocking him off, I cleaned up all the rails and began trading with him until he sold me some apples then it was time to get zombified now that my apple problem is solved i was gonna have to prepare a lot of potions of weakness so i tried to farm a bunch of brown mushrooms but apparently you can't plant mushrooms on a regular dirt block so that's disappointing but on day 332 i decided to head into the nether because brown mushrooms spawn everywhere in there so i flew to an open area and tried bone mailing some mushrooms but after two stacks of bone meal i just accepted the fact that this just wasn't gonna work so i was left with another choice but to fly around and gather all the mushrooms i was gonna use but now that we're back in the overworld we're brewing up tons of potions so now i'm not gonna have to worry about these for at least a while i went to go check on my farmer and sure enough he was zombie he was zombie so i figured i'd dunk my fletcher down there so then i could start working on finally getting that op one stick for one emerald trade that i've always been dreaming of if 333 i feel like i need a vacation from all these villagers so i decided to go work on the potato farm a bit washed them all down into the hoppers and then replanted them afterwards i decided i was getting tired of seeing the banished cartographer floating around in the ocean all alone honestly it was making me feel bad so i banished him to the volcano instead this way chickpea won't be lonely and now i don't have to look at him anymore day 334 i started off the day by clearing out the mob grinder which actually reminded me that i needed to fix this thing so i went over to the bamboo farm and cleaned it out so i could finally make some scaffoldings after trying to remember how these things work we were finally on the way up honestly i don't really trust these things and it's terrifying using them and i know it's gonna sound dumb but my goal was to try to wrap a layer around the entire mob grinder just in case if there was any sort of like light leaks that was making it so that mobs weren't spawning but we'll see if it works
Day 335. Finally time to make an enclosure for my bees. But when I went to go move some chicken graves, uh, they, they were kind of already gone. I don't really know what happened here, but someone desecrated my chicken graves. Regardless, I built out a small platform. And I know a lot of the OGs from my original hardcore series is going to like this. I decided to make their enclosure a glass bubble. So type hashtag bubble gang down in the comments if you're a real OG. After finishing the dome up, I ended the day by building a tiny little oak tree inside their enclosure. Where I will be... That was kind of cringy, I'm not going to lie. But that's where I'm going to be hanging their hive. Day 336. Speaking of that hive, it's time to move it. Afterwards, I had the bright idea of grabbing a bunch of flowers from the iron farm. Since, you know, all the iron golems should just keep dropping them. And since there's just way too many, I might as well just burn the rest. Oh my god, I just burnt my fireworks. Anyways, since also the iron farm is overflowing with iron, I figured I'd just turn all those ingots into blocks so I could actually make another beacon on the other side of my base since the distance on these things kind of suck. Day 337. I started off the day by checking on my Fletcher to see if he's giving me any good discounts. Honestly, I couldn't really remember what the deal was he was offering me before. So I figured just in case I would turn my cartographer into a Fletcher so he'll have some fresh new trades. Afterwards, I decided to head over to the gold farm in the nether. But I forgot I haven't broken the bedrock yet, so I still needed an ender pearl just to get on the roof. So after coming back with that ender pearl, I just popped right through. And then I set up to break the bedrock. And then I kind of missed the spot I was supposed to break. But second time's the charm, and I got it. If you guys didn't know how this works, I actually made a whole video about breaking an entire chunk's worth of bedrock. Pretty awesome. Go check it out. After successfully making that hole, though, it's time to go to the top of the gold farm. Because I'm going to AFK for the rest of the day. Because on day 338, it's time to head on down. But I might have made a mistake my game was lagging like crazy because there were so many items at xp just waiting at the bottom it was honestly just too crazy i mainly just wanted to come here so i could stockpile a bunch of gold so i could have it for all the golden apples i'm going to be using but then i also realized that my pickaxe and shovel were getting a bit low so i figured i'd just afk for most of the day 438 so i can mend them up with all that juice day 339 we're back at home but not for very long because we're heading back into the nether because i'm gonna try to farm some wither skulls so that i could spawn the wither and get another nether star another Another, another, another. So after beating down a bunch of bony cheeks, we finally got all the skulls that we needed. And luckily, it didn't take nearly as long this time. Day 340, we're heading over to the stronghold because I wanted to hop into the end to fight this wither. Because if you didn't know, you could actually clap the wither boss without even having to look at it by pretty much just suffocating it in bedrock, that is. Or you could just start smacking it around like I do to make it go by faster. After getting home with our new nether star, I finished off the day by making the new platform for the beacon. Day 341, we're starting off the day by finding finally making that other beacon honestly now that i have an iron and emerald beacon i definitely want to actually continue this and try to get all types of beacons afterwards i went to go check on my villagers the new fletcher was offering a better deal but if i want to get those op trades they're gonna have to get zombified some more so back down they go day 342 decided that since i'm not really using the shake shack for my villagers anymore i might as well repurpose this beautiful building and so i turned it into the brew house where i can have all my brew stands and set up some chests and barrels i definitely like the way the place turned out day 342 43. We're back to checking on our Fletcher. And the deals are still terrible. And for that, more zombification. Afterwards, I decided I finally wanted to build another base. I've always liked the idea of having bases in different dimensions, in case you ever really need something while you're there. So I spent the next six days working on this base. I started out by clearing out all the trees that are right next to my portal, which actually took a long time because when you chop down the trees, then you gotta actually break all the wart stuff because it doesn't just decay. Then I began the process of terraforming all the land. I also wanted to make the floor of this house out of red stained glass. Since it's floating above lava, I felt like it'd be pretty fitting. Then began the house building process. I didn't want it to be too big and fancy, just beautiful enough to really stand out in the nether, you know? But honestly, I'm pretty happy with the way this thing turned out. But on day 339, I was getting ready to leave when I realized that my portal wasn't centered to the house. So I decided to move it. But then I realized I didn't have any flint and steel to relight it. Or at least I thought I didn't at the time. So I gathered over a stack of gravel from an island. Somehow I didn't get a single flint from it. And I took all that gravel home and decided to shovel it there. But somehow I still didn't get any flint, which was pretty triggering. And honestly, I don't know why the Minecraft gods are punishing me. It is until I realized that I actually did still have a flint and steel on me. It was just inside my shulker box. So now I get why the gods hate me. Day 350. I have a huge project coming up soon that I'm going to need a ton of sponges for. So I grabbed my last underwater breathing potion and flew out to a fresh ocean monument. After arriving, I wanted to find the Elder Guardian as fast as possible before getting minor fatigue. But instead, I actually found 
found a room full of sponges. I didn't even know these things existed. So I tried to mine as many as I could before getting that miner's fatigue, but I wasn't able to grab too many. So I'll definitely be back later to get more. But for now, I can't just leave this thing without slaying an elder guardian. So I swam through this thing, getting more and more lost until I finally found the behemoth. And after a couple close calls, the deed was done and it was time to escape and head home. Day 351. For some reason, this is where my game audio cuts out for the rest of the video. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, I'm brewing up more potions of water breathing. Because like I said, it's a pretty huge project and I'm going to need a lot of sponges for it. Honestly, I don't know why I'm trying to keep it a secret. I mean, it's literally in the thumbnail. I'm trying to make a giant underwater dome. And after finding that sponge room, I was determined to go back and try to get as many as I can. So after brewing up some potions, I flew back over. I quickly swam inside and luckily this time I didn't even get miner's fatigue until I was already on my way out. Day 352. I realized I never really moved my book boy that sells mending. And since he's pretty important, I figured I'd move him over to the trader tower so I could keep him safe and I can always make sure I'm getting the best deals from him. But like always, typical villagers not cooperating. But for some reason, he kept running in and out of a hole and I eventually just trapped him. And afterwards, I realized that I was running out of potions of weakening. So I ended the day by brewing up enough to last me for a while. Day 353. Since I'm going to be making an underwater dome completely out of glass, I'm going to need to cook up a lot of sand. So I spent the entire day of 453 just robbing little islands. Day 354. I've had some weird obsession with wanting to mindlessly mine for trying to find that slime chunk. But I figured before going all the way down there, just to make it easier, I should try getting efficiency five on my pickaxe since I'm still a pleb and somehow still only have efficiency three. So I went over to the Shake Shack brew house thing to give my librarian some work and then take it away and give it back until he finally gave me what I wanted. I figured that efficiency is a pretty common trade to get, or so I thought, because it took all day just to get him to sell me an efficiency three book. So I bought two of them and combined them into an efficiency five book and slapped that on my pickaxe. Day 355 to 357, spent the entire time down in the mines. I pretty much spent all of day 355 mining until I said screw it and finally dug a hole all the way to the surface so that I could set up a beacon with haste. It was definitely worth it because it made mining way easier. So after mining tons of rocks, it was just a waiting game to see if I'll ever get a slime in this world. If you guys have any idea of how to make this easier, comment down below and let me know. Day 358 to 369. It's time to head in the nether where I was greeted by a witch trying to get frisky. But that's not what I'm here for. I wanted to create a wither skull farmer because I want this world to be super OP and just have beacons everywhere. And I've made one of these farms ages ago. And they definitely help a lot, but it's also insanely time consuming to make. First two days, I pretty much just spent the entire time just flattening out a giant runway so that I could have all the room I need for this thing. Then I had to place slabs just everywhere in the fortress so that withers won't spawn anywhere inside but the farm. I feel like placing all these slabs will really ruin my sanity during this 100 days. Afterwards, I wanted to place a roof on top of this beast so that I don't have to worry about gas or blaze shooting at me. And with all this mining, I had to make sure to take a break and heal my pickaxe at the XP farmer because I also had to mine a ton of netherrack to fully enclose this thing by building a bunch of walls all the way around it. After that, the last thing I had to do was make a long runway all the way down the middle of it so I could run through it and lure all the withers to the end. But after all that, it was finally done. On day 370, I spent the entire day just running up and down this thing trying to farm a bunch of withers. And I managed to get five skulls in a day, which ain't too shabby. But I think there must be some area inside this fortress that's spawning withers because I feel like I remember this thing being more OP. But that's for another day. Day 371. Things got pretty sweaty and heated during that build, so I went and took a shower. But I also forgot Minecraft was open, so on day 372, we're heading over to the stronghold because it's time to clap another wither. Man, this never gets old. But honestly, it's because I forgot my beacon down in the mines, and I didn't farm all those wither skulls for nothing, so I'd rather just make a new beacon. For the rest of day 372, I was flying around the ocean trying to slay drowns because I wanted to craft a conduit. But after slaying drowned after drowned and the sun was setting, so on day 373, we're back at it with beating some drowns. But after pretty much spending the entire day of not getting a single Nautilus shell, I kind of just accepted the fact that this might not ever happen. But at the end of the day, I was reminded by some turtles that I could actually use their eggs to create a farmer. So this might be a goal for 500 days. Day 374, back at home. And I noticed that there was another wandering trader that showed up. So I made my way over to him and he actually sells Podsel. Oh my gosh, I can finally have grass. I quickly grabbed my emeralds and bought some. Afterwards, I walked into the trader tower and it turns out that two of my villagers became zombies. Not entirely sure how or why, but all right. Oh yeah, and you better believe that I grabbed one of his llamas to be the captain of the brown pearl. And this time I was definitely gonna name him so he won't despawn. So I had to level up my librarian so that he could sell me some name tags so that I could just give him a temporary name because I actually want one of you guys to name him. So the most liked name in the comments section will be the winner and I'll give him that name in 500 days. But for now, his temporary name will be Warapskaj, which if you know, you know. If you don't get the joke, then 
and uh, oh well i guess a 375 to 399 Ooh, this is a long time coming i started off the day by planting my dookie grass i really hope this stuff spreads but now it's time to begin the long tedious process of building the underwater dome i barely squeezed this build in time because naturally when you're working underwater the entire process is literally in slow motion but i also have a really op hardcore world where i built tons of underwater stuff so i'm pretty familiar with the process but it still took a while to shake off all the rust but after terraforming the land i mapped out a giant circle twice okay maybe three times because i messed up the circle all right but then i had to lay all the glass which took forever partly because i also ran out of glass and had to wait for some of it to finish cooking but that wasn't even the worst part i had over 20 sponges and getting rid of all the water still took forever but it was all worth it because i think underwater builds look absolutely amazing but i also wanted to build this for you guys think about it like it's your own little base i plan on adding things and customizing it based off your guys' suggestions and comments so think of some customizations that i can make to this in 500 days oh yeah and day 400 Time for some of that B-roll. day 401 getting a little bit of a late start to the day but i started it off by updating you guys on the podsole which did not spread like at all so it looks like i'm not even going to be able to get dookie grass in this world so i figured that if i sacrifice some chicken eggs then maybe then one day the lands will be rich enough to spread uh, and also i figured that while i'm here i'm seeing a lot of people comment saying that i just gotta bone meal the dirt and then i'll get some grass but here let me let me show you real quick here let me just you hear that it's it does it doesn't work i don't know a version of minecraft you guys are playing that it works but it doesn't work here <laughs> afterwards i noticed that the mob grinder was getting pretty full so i went over there and cleaned it out but then i remembered that i trapped my wandering trader that sold me pods wait he got snacked on by a zombie well i guess i'm not getting any more podsel so i got my boat back and noticed that the sun was going down day four and two i finally had enough of this mob grinder so i began working on a new platform in preparations for our new farm new new farm new mob farm but after finishing up with that i noticed that the potato farm needed a trim i like you cut g and then of course i took those potatoes and turned them into cold hard emeralds in day 403 Back to preparing for this farm. I was gonna need a lot of dispensers for this thing, which means I was gonna need a lot of bows, which also meant that I was gonna need a lot of string, which I could get from my spider farm. I pretty much just sat at the spider farm for most of the day, just collecting string and using it to heal my tools. So not much else to talk about here. Day 404, we're back. Back at home and I just realized that I have to name the Captain Llama. I said that the most liked comment in 400 days would be able to pick the name. And the most liked comment is Paul GG by Beppo. But I think they might have uh, commented something else. I don't know. It says that it's been edited. I see you though. But either way, let's go name the... Wait, where's my llama? So wait, does the llama just despawn no matter what? I gave it a temporary name and it still despawns? Well, I guess the brown pearl just might be captainless forever. I guess I could just name myself Paul GG then. Now that that's out of the way, I just spent the rest of the day just preparing for the new mob farm. Like getting some wood, crafting up some dispensers, getting some more redstone. Day 405 to 415. I realized I should probably go check on Chickpea since it's been a while since we last seen him. And I know how much you guys love to see him, so I set off for Mount Chickpea. After having a little chat with him, I realized that the banished cartographer was still here. Then I remembered that he actually buys paper. And since I don't have a cartographer at home, I figured that maybe I could get him in the boat. But he still seems to be hurt, so I'm going to let him have his time. Afterwards, I returned home to begin construction on the new mob farm. But what I didn't realize is that this was actually going to take about 10 days. I built this farm in the past to specifically farm for gunpowder, but for now, I'll just have it farm for all the mobs. It was a really long and grueling process that took tons of cobblestone. But once it was all done, it was completely worth it. Day 416, it was time to chop down the old mob grinder because I realized that's actually hogging up some of the mobs. So I grabbed some scaffolding. I, I don't really know why I did that instead of using my elytra. But either way, I spent the entire day just chipping away at this giant beast. But I forgot that I also made this a double decker. Double, double, double decker cheeseburger. <clears throat> After underestimating how thick this thing was, I had to come back on day 417. So I continued to mow down this giant beast. That is until on the way down to clear out my inventory, I noticed that there was another traveling trader. And since I don't let people live here rent free, I went to go see what his trades were. Turned out that he was actually selling Nautilus shells and slime. Coincidentally, two things that I wanted to get in 400 days. So I quickly started to do some trades so that I could get some more emeralds so that then I could be able to buy all of what he has. But apparently it's not very much. So those trades were kind of pointless. And because he hardly sold me anything, I figured that I would just take his llama, which will unlike 
likely be the permanent captain of the Brown Pearl. But regardless, I held up my end of the bargain and gave him the name tag. Day 418. I got back to grinding the grinder as hard as I could. And luckily, after an entire day of grinding on the grinder, the grinder was finally grinded. Thank you. <laughs> Oh God. Day 419. Now that I got rid of that old mob grinder, I had a ton of mob trash that I had to go through and organize. But most importantly, I turned the rotten flesh into stonks. Afterwards, I finished up the day by checking on the new mob grinder and it definitely seems like it's cranking away. Day 420. <laughs> But since it is day 420, I gathered up all my gunpowder so that I can light it up uh, <laughs> so I can light up some TNT. But to be able to make all that TNT, I was going to need a lot of sand. So I flew out to the only tiny islands I knew that was nearby and I robbed them of their sand. Day 421 to 423. I started off by trading with the trap. Never mind. Apparently Chicken 125 thought it'd be funny to kill my traveling merchant. And for that, he's banished to Mount Chickpea. <laughs> then afterwards, it was time to head into the nether where I was going to spend the next two days mining for ancient debris with tnt honestly i just love mining with tnt you could just mindlessly dig a hole and then put a giant row of tnt in it and then explode it and then and with a little over two stacks of tnt i managed to get 27 ancient debris so honestly not too shabby i was also thinking about slowly hollowing out a giant cavern here just by mining with a bunch of tnt i think it'll look terrifying but also be really fun day 424 we're back at home and i'm smelting down my ancient debris and then crafting them all into netherite ingots and if you were wondering why i was mining ancient debris it's because i was going to make a new armory where the old mob grinder used to be but after building out the first layer i realized that i built it all out of stone brick which didn't really match the blackstone builds so down it goes. Day 425 to 426, I'm back at it with construction. And this time I got the right materials. The entire time while building this, I just kept experimenting with different designs and patterns. And honestly, I have to say that this is definitely my least favorite build I've ever made. <laughs> This thing just looks kind of like a tank. Well, I guess that's kind of a good thing though, since it's supposed to be an armory. Uh, anyways, I finished off the ugly beast and put some item frames inside and put my netherite armor in there. Looking back on it, I don't know why I didn't just use armor stands. On day 427, I started off the day by heading over to Trader Tower. That is until I noticed a creeper inside the Shake Shack. So I busted out the blicky and tried sniping him. But one of my villagers got caught in the crossfire. Yeah, he'll be fine. He's just gotta walk it off. But now that that's taken care of, I went to the top of Trader Tower to be able to build out like a little penthouse area because I figured it would be a lot easier to breed villagers at the top of the penthouse to be able to then send them down to work. So then I finished off the day by placing a rail system so that the villagers could get up to the new penthouse. Day 428, I spent the entire day moving everyone. And dang, does that rail card zoom? But after zooming each and every single one of them up to the top of the penthouse, I set up a bunch of beds and finished off the day by cleaning up all the rails. Day 429 to 430. It's been a little while since I've worked on the Tato farm, so I washed them all down down into the hoppers and replanted them. I definitely want to change this thing to be a fully automatic farmer because it just takes so much time just to replant every single one of these potatoes. But afterwards, of course, I turned some of those potatoes into emeralds. And I was going to cook up the last of the potatoes because I'm running low on food. But that's when I realized that I'm running out of coal. So I figured I could go get some coal in the nether by slaying some wither skellies. Now, I know this isn't really the most effective way, but I want to get some more skulls anyways. So after arriving at the farmer, I was running up and down the runway a little bit. But that is until I started playing whack-a-mole with the magma slimes these guys are just taunting me until i realized that i was just wasting my time but after going up and down the runway a few times oh doorbell hi paul i'm new pizza person here is your pizza what's that it's only 27.4 percent of a pizza whoa that sounds so sad imagine that happening to you well guess what that's what you do to paul when only 27.4 percent subscribe you give Paul 27.4% of a pizza every day until you sub to his channel. Please sub so Paul can go back to eating whole pizzas again. But after going up and down the runway a few times, I realized I could also firework up and down it, which was pretty fun because it made a cool running sound. But no more playing around. It was time to bust some cheeks. But after a day and a half of farming, I got two wither skulls. Yep, just two. That's right, guys. I got terrible luck. So what? But that's okay because I got more at home. Day 431 to 436. The mob farm was doing pretty well. So well, in fact, that I decided to add a bunch more layers to this thing and make it insanely OP. And since I got all that cobblestone from tearing down the old mob farm, it was a piece of cake, so I built this thing all the way up to the clouds. But because I'm a genius, and after building all these different layers and putting a roof on it, I realized that I didn't put any torches on each level. So adding all the water to the dispensers was a pain because of all the mobs, but in eh, but otherwise it was all right. Because it was all worth it, this thing's gonna start pumping out an insane amount of loot. I mean, look at this thing, it's intimidating. 
Day 437. I realized I'm pretty much completely out of woods, so I just spent the entire day just growing and chopping down oak trees. Honestly, it was a pretty peaceful day, just hanging out with my chickens. Day 438. I decided I wanted to finally go on another big adventure. It's been a little while since I've done one. But on the last big adventure that I went on, it took forever to get home, and I started running out of food and fireworks. So I made sure I spent all of day 438 thoroughly prepping for this thing, because I don't want anything bad to happen this time. And of course, I also fed my villagers, because who knows if I'm ever even I'm gonna come back and they, they might just be starving while i'm gone day 438 to 451 i started this adventure off by heading into the nether because the quickest way to get really far away is by flying on the roof of the nether so after popping a few fireworks it was time to build a nether portal and after going through it it put me in a mine shaft or so i thought i ran around in the caves and i literally couldn't find any other part of the mine shaft other than what i spawned on so I went back and tore down the portal and started flying a little further away so I could be able to make a new one. And this time it spawned me over the water and about 20,000 blocks away from home. Now this was a really long journey. So I'll just try to summarize it as best as I can for all the days that really mattered. Like on day 439, I found a giant island not too far away from the portal. So I could definitely come back here and get some more sand later if I need it. Day 441 to 442. I decided to stop at sunken ships so that I'm able to get a bunch of loot and as well as treasure maps, which actually worked out because I started started collecting things that I actually needed for my conduit. And then obviously tons of gold, iron, and diamonds. Day 443. I found a full-size boat sitting in a giant coral reef. That's when I realized I should start chopping down all the wood of these ships since I don't have any saplings for dark oak or spruce. And I'm never going to see these ships again anyway, so what does it matter? Day 446, I found another exposed stronghold. This got me a bit confused because I thought this was the one I already found, but it wasn't, so I spent the day looting it. Day 447, I found a giant underwater portal. I thought this thing was pretty neat, and I spent a lot of time mining around in it trying to find a chest. Uh, but spoilers, there wasn't. So that's disappointing. Disappointed! Day 448. I was texting while flying and I almost flew right into an ocean monument. So note to self, guys, don't, don't text and fly. Later that day, I found an underwater city where I fought off tons of drowns. And that's when I had the realization that I actually want to make an overpowered fishing rod. Fish, fishing, fish, fishing rod. Because I was getting tons of fishing rods from all the drowns. Day 449. I was trying to get some buried treasure that was a little bit too close to an ocean monument. So, of course, I got miner's fatigue. Great. But it was also coming towards the end of the day, so I stopped at a tiny island to sleep. Day 450. I waited. For a really long time, actually, for the miner's fatigue to go away. But I was determined to wait, because the island that I stopped on had this, like, giant square shape in it. I actually really wanted to dig inside to see what it was. But it wasn't really anything special, it just kind of turned into a cave. So I flew around the island a bit, because honestly, it's looking kind of sus, I'm not gonna lie. But I continued on with my adventure. And at the end of the day, I actually found a massive island. This thing definitely takes the cake for the tallest island I've found yet. And not too long into day 251, I found a floating nether portal. The loot was pretty bad i'm not gonna lie but uh, this thing kind of just looked really cool and afterwards i continued on with my adventure and i actually found an old nether portal so it's obvious that i've been here i just don't know how or where i came from and luckily i picked the right direction because i managed to find my stronghold and so that means not long after i actually made it home day 452 this is uh where the 500 day video kind of just takes a 180 while recording this my power went out which actually corrupted the file for this video so naturally the first thing i did was go to twitter to complain but then i also spent a couple hours to try to recover the file that got corrupted but i did it for you guys because i wasn't going to just show you a black screen and talk about what i did on those days so on day 452 i spent the day just trying to get an op fishing rod i kept enchanting a bunch of different fishing rods and then grindstoning some and combining others until finally i got the super fishing rod day 453 i flew over to my small vacation home and just spent the entire day fishing and the first thing i actually got with this op fishing rod was another fishing rod that actually has mending on it which works out perfectly because now i don't have to buy a mending book and honestly it was just such a peaceful nice day <laughs> Day 454 to 455. I started off the day by upgrading my fishing rod by adding mending. Afterwards, I went into the nether to fly up to the XP farmer because after enchanting all these fishing rods, it made me lose a lot of levels. So I just AFK'd for the rest of the day, getting all sorts of levels and then flying back up and then getting all sorts of levels and then AFKing some more. And I definitely tried to grab as much rotten flesh and gold as I can because the lag was getting a little OP. And besides, then I could be able to turn it all into stonks anyways. And on my way out, I realized that my tools need a bit of that mending 
ending juice. So I pretty much just AFK for the rest of day 455. And while healing all my tools, I actually noticed that my axe doesn't even have mending on it. So on day 456, I started off the day by adding mending to my axe. And then I grabbed all the rotten flesh and a bunch of gold. And then I went over to Trader Tower so I could get some of that cold, hard emeralds. But after these trades, I've realized I definitely need to bring down some more villagers soon. Afterwards, I decided to fly around and try to find some more underwater drowned cities, since that seems like the fastest way to being able to get Nautilus shells, since I'm also going to need those to be able to make a conduit later. But I probably should have checked how much I was going to need before coming out here. But just in case, I spent almost all of day 457 out here slaying drowns and hunting down treasures, and we managed to get a handful of Nautilus shells, so we should be all right. Day 458, I spent the entire day breaking down the potato farm, because I'm getting kind of tired of this setup, and it needs to be better. And on day 459 i started building up the new potato farm and i wanted to make it kind of like a giant glass bubble so that i could be able to protect my villagers from the outside world last thing i want is them turning into zombies on me day 460 it's time to start moving over some villagers so that i'm able to breed them and turn them into farmers and hard workers so i set up this giant rail system heading from trader tower all the way to the potato farm and i sent off my first villager but then he started being difficult like always and just wanted to go take a job inside the house instead of being in the potato farm and wasting my time but then on day 461 i finished moving over my second villager and gave him a farming job and started feeding him potatoes so that hopefully they can have that baby juice flowing but afterwards i pretty much closed out the day by cleaning up all the rails and cobblestone mess day 462 doesn't really seem like the villagers are making babies so i decided to put them in the brown pearl and see if that'll help them with the baby making and afterwards i realized that i haven't checked on the mob farm for a while and dang is this thing getting packed and with all those materials i decided to go do some stonks we're trying to get rich because i'm going to be spending a lot of money later day 463 to 464 i i spent the entire time chopping down trees literally just just growing trees and chopping them down but at least on day 464 i got this foolproof strategy of making it so that a tree could only grow to a certain height it was it was working out perfectly but i was going to need a ton of wood because i was going to start modifying the mob farm so that it only starts spitting out creepers because i want to try to get a lot of gunpowder for tnt for 600 <laughs> start running out of breath for tnt for the 600 day video so on day 465 to 468 i spent the entire time adjusting the mob farm so that it'll only spawn those creepers and to do that basically all i had to do was put some trap doors on the roof because creepers are just some short boys but this was an incredibly time consuming job considering the fact that i kept getting pushed around by water and it was really annoying but it's going to be worth it in the long run and after spending all that time i only ended up making a halfway down the mob farm but i decided that might actually Actually be for the best so that i'm able to still get some rotten flesh for stonks day 469 checking on the potato farmers and it looks like they actually got a kid that's grown up so i shoveled some more potatoes at them so they could get them juices flowing then i went to trader tower to go do some stonks but apparently two of my villagers transformed into zombies so it looks like no stonks today and i decided to finish off the day by brewing up a bunch more potions of weakening because i'm starting to run low on those day 470 the farmers finally had another kid so i began setting up the auto farmer system make it so that the the other two villagers are doing all the farming work and then they try throwing potatoes to their friend but then there's a hopper in between and it's just this whole thing but it works out perfectly because they walk right up and start throwing potatoes once their inventory is full day 471 while waiting for that last baby villager to grow so that i could put the finishing touches on the potato farm i decided to build a chandelier so that there'll be plenty of light in here so that no mobs will spawn but afterwards i noticed that the baby villager had grown up and i needed to separate them so that i could divide the room in half but like always villagers are just a struggle but luckily after enough pushing around i managed to get them separated so now the only place that they could throw potatoes is at the villagers that are behind the hoppers day 472 i started off the day by making a hoe and then of course i turned it into netherite and then of course i decided to go enchant it and remember guys you can't put loyalty on a hoe but you can get fortune three and afterwards i went to the potato farm and got it all set up and loaded with potatoes so that the villagers can begin all their farming and then i went and got some starbucks and so i just kind of hung out with the potato farmers anyways day 473 i started off by getting some of them cold hard emeralds afterwards i decided that next time i come here i'm gonna need to get better deals so i decided to dunk my villagers but then i realized i haven't cleaned out any of the auto farmers lately so i went to go clean out the iron farm and yep it's overflowing so i grabbed as much iron as i could and turned them all into blocks and then i expanded the chest of the iron farm to a double chest afterwards i cleaned out the sugarcane farm which is definitely gonna need an upgrade in the future because it doesn't seem like it's doing too much and then i checked on the bamboo 
farm and dang is that thing pumping bamboo grows fast day 474 to 476 i decided it was finally time to make that conduit but that's when i found out i actually still need just one more nautilus shell so i set off on an adventure to hopefully find another underwater city but after finding tons of drowns and i had no luck on day 474 so on day 475 i tried the treasure map strategy because that seemed to work before but i mindlessly just looted a bunch of chests and had no luck and honestly i just wanted to give up but finally on day 476 i managed to find one drowned holding a nautilus shell so after clapping his cheeks i realized i was super far away from home and i spent the entire day trying to find home and it just honestly took forever it was it was a long trip day 477 now that i finally got everything to craft that conduit the only pieces that i was missing was prismarine blocks which i'm gonna have to get from an ocean monument and after arriving at one i quickly rushed to grab as many blocks as possible before getting miners fatigue but it's still just so slow so i tried to craft up some doors and i got miners fatigue nice and so while waiting for the miners fatigue to go away i figured that i could do some stonks at traders tower but i forgot that my villagers were still zombies so i just safely afk in the potato farm instead on day 478 now that the miners fatigue is gone it's time to make that conduit i decided to make it not too far away from my base but also close enough to my next giant underwater project but while building around the conduit apparently i didn't have enough blocks which meant that i gotta go back to the ocean monument but this time i was gonna be prepared with doors already which definitely seemed to work because i actually got a ton of blocks before even getting miners fatigue and on day 479 i started off by finishing up with that conduit and then i realized that i was gonna need a whole lot more prismarine blocks for my next big project so I flew back to the ocean monument, but this time I got instant miners fatigue. Yep, like literally right away. So pretty much for the rest of the day, I just did some stonks and AFK'd. Day 480 to 500. This this is gonna be a long one. Hold on. Buckle up, boys and girls. I'm heading back over to the ocean monument, but this time like a pro. I'm doing the old lower down the view distance strategy to prevent getting miners fatigue, which it worked out perfectly. I was able to mine freely and get all the blocks I was gonna need. And afterwards, I pretty much just spent the remainder of the 100 days building a giant fish tank now i'm sure i'm gonna get called dumb for building a fish tank in an ocean world because it is just a giant fish tank but let's be real here i mean this world is dumb so it's only suiting regardless i had to start off by building a giant circle and this circle took me forever because the fact that i didn't want to mess up even even though i did a couple times but afterwards then i had to get all my glass which luckily i was cooking up a lot of glass because i was gonna have to wall in the entire thing which just took a giant chunk of time afterwards i wanted to terraform the inside with sand so that I can make sure that there wasn't any gaps with the glass, but also give the fish tank just some character. But then I ran out of sand. So I went into the nether and flew to the portal I made on the roof really far away so I could go to the giant island that we found earlier. And I just shoveled all the sand I was ever gonna need. And after finishing up with all that terraforming, I had to get a bunch of pretty coral and pickles so that I could be able to light up the place so it's not so depressing in here. And then the last thing I was gonna do was get a bunch of fish. But I started with the puffer fish and it didn't seem like he wanted to live in my luxurious fish tank i tried to grab as many different colored fish as i could and then afterwards i made the best financial decision to spend a ton of emeralds on buying name tags but i somehow only ended up with 12 uh, but regardless though first 12 people that joined my discord which is linked down below by the way and type their favorite color in the general chat i will name a fish after you i mean but please please don't spam that color all right but the sun is setting on the 500th day just in time for some b-roll day 501 now that we're back it's about time i hold up my end of the bargain at the end of 500 ocean days i said that the first 12 people to join my community discord and type their favorite color in the general chat would get a fish named after them so i went through and labeled all the name tags for the 12 people that joined which which cost a lot of xp by the way so you're lucky i love you and then flew my way over to the fish tank now i'll be honest i uh i, I don't really remember everyone's favorite color um so everyone gets a random fish <laughs>
Afterwards, I figured I'd go check on all my villagers, see how they're doing. Seems like the potato boys are still hard at work, but for some reason, the penthouse at Trader Towers uh, is just getting flooded with iron golems again. Man, I hate these guys. So I pretty much just spent the rest of the day chopping down the iron golems. Day 502. I figured before all those iron golems spawn back, I should probably put down a bunch of carpets so that it'll just prevent them from spawning. But for that, I was going to need wool. And to get wool in this world, I was going to need a lot of string. And hey, look, now we're at the spider farm. I pretty much just spent the whole day at the spider farm because you guys know the best way to farming these things. You just AFK for a little bit and bam, a giant pile up. Then you can just chop away at them and get tons of strength. Day 503, we're back at home. And I'm making all those carpets. And good thing, because the iron golems are already starting to spawn back. After laying down all the carpets, I got rid of that blockhead and then went down into the ocean to get some sea pickles so that I could be able to make some green glass because I want to upgrade my emerald beacon. I don't remember where I found out about this, but you just make some panes and then put it on top of the beacon and boom, it just changes the color of that beautiful beam. Honestly, I think it looks pretty poggers. Day 504 to 518. This was a long journey. I started off by checking the mob farm and man, that thing's pumping. I wish I would have remembered that I had this thing back when I needed some string. Oh, yeah, well, well. Anyways, I grabbed all the gunpowder out of it so I can make loads of TNT for ancient debris mining. After crafting them all up, I ended up with almost five stacks of TNT, which if I'm going to want a netherite beacon, I was going to definitely need a whole lot more than that. After going into the nether, I made my way down to where we've been hollowing out a giant area. Just mining for tons of ancient debris and i would say that it was pretty successful i mean i would just mine out tons of tunnels and then blow them up that wasn't being stingy with the tnt either i was laying them down real close because i wanted to be thorough about this i hate when i find out that i was actually just missing ores the entire time which it managed to pay off because we actually bagged i managed to bag almost four stacks of ancient debris which sounds like a lot but honestly it's it's really not uh <laughs> but i did hollow out a giant area it's so big in fact that now you can even just fly around down here. I kind of just want to keep expanding this. This is just kind of epic. Day 519. We're back at home and I'm starting to smelt down all that ancient debris we got. And while waiting for those to smelt, I figured I'd get all my gold together, but unfortunately it just, it wasn't enough. <laughs> And this is also where my game audio cuts out for some reason, so let's just not talk about that. Anyway, since I'm out of gold, I figured I'd go into the nether to go explore some bastions for that free gold. Or I thought it was free until I almost died to some piglins. But after cooking their bacon, I ran through this thing and stole all the gold I was going to need. And on my way back, I stopped to mine some nuggets with my fortune pickaxe. But that's when I remembered, actually. I have the OP gold farm on the roof. Oh, well, I pretty much got all the gold that I was going to need for this. Day 520, I finished up by making all the netherite ingots and then turned them all into blocks. Remember when I said that it seemed like a lot of ancient debris? Well, yeah, it, it actually wasn't. Because <laughs> all that actually just turned out to be six netherite blocks. And well, this is what it looks like. Just, just six blocks. Not a whole lot, actually. Regardless, I decided that I was going to try to transform the emerald beacon into a fully netherite one. So give this video a like if you want to see that transformation happen. Day 521 to 528. I started off the day by going to visit Chickpea because I completely forgot about him and I know how much you guys love him. Afterwards, I went to go see how the car photographer was doing but he's still giving me the cold shoulder Well, now that that visit's out of the way, time to get back on the grind. And since this mob farm is just so OP, I decided to extend it by a bunch of levels, which unfortunately starts with the tedious process of tearing down the giant roof. But after that, I had to build up each platform for all the mobs to spawn on. And after all that's done, I had to put another giant roof on the top of this beast. Dang, this thing's big. It's actually above the clouds now. Then I had to add all the water buckets to each of the dispensers. And then it was time to flip it on and give it a test. But it, it, it doesn't look like it's working. Hold on. Turns out my observers are facing the wrong way. So I had to go and flip each one of them. But now it's looking good. Day 529 to 530. I decided to build a platform above the farm to be able to AFK in it just to see how OP this thing really is. But AFKing for one day kind of turned into two because I got a little distracted. when I got back, man, this thing was cranking. I mean, look at all these mobs in this thing and the chests are already filling up so fast. So because of that on day 531, I spent the entire time just cleaning out the mob farm and organizing all the gunpowder. Because once I have a full chest of gunpowder, I think I'm gonna go back to netherite mining, which honestly, it doesn't seem like it's gonna take very long anyways. After that, I decided to set up some more chests and hoppers for this farm, since it seems like it's gonna be overflowing if I just look away from it. But while I was setting it up, there was actually a skeleton that he's just kind of OP. He just kind of ran against the current of the water and then jumped into the ocean and started doing some 360s uh, okay and then on day 532 to 533 I spent the whole time just doing stonks with villagers hold on i gotta pop up on my screen guys 
I need your help. Paul trapped me in his phone and he's not letting me out until we hit 1 million subscribers. I know I'm just an invisible jobless pizza person but I can't live like this. So if you wanna save John Cena, um I mean the pizza person, please subscribe now so we can get to a million before Paul makes me into a nap and uninstalls his pizza service permanently. But if not, it's cool. Thanks, bro. And since I have loads of string, I decided to turn it all into wool so that then I can make a shepherd villager and make bunch of stonks off of wool also. But I wanted to get the shepherd down below so that I could be able to zombify him and get the best deals possible. And so I figured the best method to getting him down would just be popping a hole in the ground and pushing him into it, which yeah, actually kind of worked. After getting him down there and zombifying him and a bunch of other villagers, and while waiting for them to transform back, I figured I'd just clean out the iron farm. Oh no, I paused and I don't know when I put Rick. And on day 534, I decided after using all those name tags, I should head over to the XP farm in the nether so I could be able to get all my levels back up. I like to try to stay above level 50. But after arriving in AFK for a bit, a bit too long, I flew all the way down to gather up all the XP and I thought for sure my game was gonna crash. I mean, this thing was so laggy. I mean, just look at it. Luckily, my OP computer held strong and I managed to suck up all those levels. What the... Then I went through all the trash items that was causing all sorts of lag. And I know people are going to comment that I should hook this up to a hopper system and then go into a furnace to be able to get more gold. But I'm just honestly too lazy. We'll save that for another day. And on day 535, I decided to fly on the roof of the nether so I could fast travel all the way out to that giant sand island that we found a long time ago. So I could just shovel my life away and have all the sand I was going to need for TNT later. Day 536 to 542. We're back at home and I'm doing tons of stonks. Well, that is after I transform all my villagers again you guys know i'm trying to get them sweet discounts but while waiting for them to transform back into villagers i need to get a bunch more potions of weakening since i'm actually just flying through these things now but regardless i pretty much just spent the entire time just doing tons of trades becoming stupid rich off this mob farm since almost all the villagers just buy mob parts I even managed to get my farmer all the way down to one potato for one emerald trade. Then I also got my brew boy to one rotten flesh for one emerald trade. And all these one emerald trades are just making me go crazy. I love these discounts. The trades were so OP, I even managed to get eight and a half stacks of emeralds in such a short amount of time. And you might be wondering what I'm gonna be doing with all these emeralds, but that's gonna be for a project later. Don't worry about it. Day 543, it's time to finally craft up all the TNT I can. Well, kind of crafting all of it. I ran out of sand and I'm just way too lazy to fly all the way back to that island to shovel up some more. But I still ended up with almost seven stacks of TNT, so we should be fine for now. I'll just save the rest of the gunpowder for a big explosion later. Day 544 to 564. I spent an insane amount of time in the nether. I was feeling super determined at the time to be able to get all the netherite I was going to need. So I went back down into the hollows, mined out a giant line for TNT. But that's when I realized that I should have probably brought some fire resistance potions because lava is just relentless. So I wasted some time mining up some gold to do some trades with piglins. And now I only managed to get one fire res. Well, I mean, I, I guess it helped a little bit. Afterwards, I finished up laying tons of TNT and set it off. But after the TNT explosions, it just revealed an insane amount of lava, which was mildly triggering. And I was just honestly getting tired of mining down here. It was pretty clear that I was just going underneath a lava lake. Put lava lack. Hold on, let me just... It's causing way too many problems. So I mined up all the ancient debris that I couldn't left. So I could be able to find some new fresh lands. And after finding a new area that seemed like it was far enough away from a lava lake, I mined a really, really long snake tunnel that just linked up all the TNT that I placed. So that it would just automatically start blowing it up and making a giant room, which was insanely time consuming, but also really satisfying. After laying down all that TNT, something triggered it and lighted it. Yeah and lighted it hello <laughs> something triggered it and lit the tnt i'm assuming it's just lava but regardless it revealed a ton of ancient debris i even went through the trouble of plugging up all the lava just so i could be able to look out and just see all those ancient debris floating around in the end i managed to mine up over three stacks of ancient debris which again sounds like a lot but we all know how this is going to turn out day 565 we're back at home and we're smelting down all those ancient debris but while waiting for them to smelt i knew i wasn't going to have enough gold so i quickly ran to the gold farm and just afk'd for most of the day just to make sure i got all the gold that i was going to need but things got a little out of hand again and uh, the xp tried destroying my computer but we managed to pull through and i got all the gold that i was going to need so now it's time to craft up all those netherite blocks which ended up only being six blocks again so i placed them on the beacon and it's definitely starting to look good but i'm also realizing that there's zero chance that i'm gonna be able to finish this in 100 days yeah <laughs> So on day 566, I decided to start on a new project. I wanted to transform the main areas of my base to have an emerald floor. I think this will look like an absolute flex, but something about emeralds that just looks so good. And the sound when you walk on them. 
Woo! Oh, so nice. I used up all the emeralds I currently have. I managed to make a ring around my house platform. And honestly, just even as an accent block, I mean, it's looking pretty far. But I knew this was going to be a massive project and probably one of the most, most time consuming, frustrating projects I've done out of this entire series yet. So this better pay off. But on day 567 to, to 600, Man, I dealt with a lot of villagers. I pretty much just spent the entire time trading with villagers. And since this is such a long and tedious process, I'll just have my editor, Jake, slap together a really nice looking montage for you guys. I paused and I don't know why I thought I just hit record again, but yeah, either way, here we go. <laughs> but during all this time, I actually learned a lot about villagers. Like apparently they actually have a max amount of sales that they could even do in one day, which made it super annoying. So then I started even trading with all the villagers at the top of the penthouse and of course got the potato boys involved. But after tons and tons of trades by day 584, I had my entire base platform completely made out of emeralds, which means that the nether portal platform was next. And I managed to finish that off by day 596. That's when I realized it would be kind of cool if I actually made all the littler islands out of other ores. Like maybe the left side out of gold or the right side out of iron, you know, diamonds, something. I don't know, comment down below. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. But I managed to finish off the Shake Shack platform on the morning of day 600, which is perfect because that actually gives me just enough time to do some B-roll. day 601 naturally the first thing i was gonna do on this world after taking a short break was to say hello to everybody looks like the potato boys are just as lazy as ever leaving potatoes literally all over the ground you stupid but afterwards i went to go see how the chickens are doing and they're just living it up like always geez there's a lot of eggs around here though and of course i decided to fly all the way out to mount chickpea just to say hi to the best chicken in minecraft then i remembered the banished cartographer was here oh yeah and he, he wanted to say something to you guys he said you guys should sub paul has trapped me on this island for weeks. I am out of food. I haven't seen a single person other than those chickens. The only way to get me off this island is to buy his new plushie for only $25.99. Oh, okay, never mind. Day 602 to 603. I made my way over to the stronghold because it's time to hop into the end. One thing I've learned in the last 100 days is that I need more shulker boxes. But unfortunately, in this world, shulkers are just not that common because it takes forever just to find an end city out here in the outer ends. But eventually, after a ton of flying, I managed to find an end city. Well, it was a tiny one. <clears throat> but not far from that one was a nice big one. So I began running through this thing, busting down shulker after shulker and finally after the shulker extinction it was time to go home which finding another portal just to leave took just as long as finding the end city so it just took forever and i hate to stupid end. day 604 to 609 i started off by dyeing my new shulker boxes with pretty much the only colors i could get in this entire world afterwards i decided to start constructing a new storage room because my current storage room is just way too tiny and i also want to be able to have enough room so that i can have an auto sorter for it but like always the project's got to start with building a big circle platform after that that, after that after that i began the building process you already know i'm gonna go with that blackstone theme but i didn't really have a specific vision for this build so i mean you guys know that doesn't usually turn out too well <clears throat> but i am honestly liking the way this is turning out so far the only downside is i actually ran out of blackstone not too long into the build and so if i was gonna go get some more blackstone that means that i was gonna need to heal up my pickaxe because this thing's looking a little little fragile so i made my way up to the xp farm in the top of the nether i pretty much just afk'd and gathered xp for most of the day just 
just healing up all of my tools. And on day 611 to 612, we're back. Wait, why are, why are we back at home? Oh, wait, no, I need Blackstone. So we're going back into the nether. I pretty much just spent the entire time just mining Blackstone and Basalt. I'm trying to get loaded up on this stuff so I don't even have to think about getting it again. Which honestly, it kind of did pay off though because now I got over a shulker box full of Blackstone and Basalt. So that'll leave us some room to be able to do some builds in the future. And day 613 to 625, I began building out the rest of this storage room. This thing kind of just turned into a big beast. The hardest part about this entire thing was definitely the roof though. Oh my gosh, dude, that, that roof was difficult. I did the exact same roof that was on the Shake Shack. Honestly, this kind of just looks like Shake Shack 2.0. This thing just looks epic. And like I said, honestly, I kind of vibe with this build. It's definitely turning out to be one of my favorite buildings. And day 626, I felt like I needed a break from all this building I've been doing. So I just spent the entire day just cleaning out all my farmers, starting with the iron farm and man, this thing's getting full. But that's kind of a good thing because I'm gonna be needing a whole lot of iron soon. Afterwards, I cleaned out all the gunpowder from the OP mob farm and well, I'm definitely gonna need to expand this thing soon. And after that, I cleaned out the sugarcane farm and the bamboo farm and decided that, eh, why not? Might as well do some stonks, it's been a while. And that's when I realized that I abandoned my zombie villager on day one. So I gave him a cure and went on about my stonks. Anyways, on day 627, I decided it was finally time I moved all my armor stands to, well, over to the armory because, you know, I mean, it's an armory. So then I decided to chop down that giant ugly tree that keeps blocking the beautiful view of the ocean. But that's also when I remember that I have a tiny bee enclosure and I realized I should probably build a proper bee farm one day. So drop a like for the bees. And while on my, and while on my way over to the new storage room, I decided it's about time I probably should chop down the sugarcane farm. Don't worry, I'll build a bigger, better one later. I'm just tired of hitting my head on this thing every single time I come over here. And on day 628 to 641, I spent the entire time just finishing the inside of the storage room. I've never built an auto sorter before. However, I knew that they were amazing, so I wanted to make one. But what I didn't know is that I was gonna be making so many mistakes while building this thing. It just took so long to get it set up right, even with tutorials. And when I finally finished up with one side, it was time to test it out. I created a special key. I created a special key to filter out all the items and gave it a test. It looks like everything's working fine. Now I just I have to do that all over, all over again. <sighs> but I pretty much just wasted a ton of time trying to figure out how to make it look fancy with a dropper or a dispenser, trying to go into a waterfall, and then it just, it just got too complicated. But finally, while I was finishing up with the other side of the storage room, a wandering trader spawned. And he isn't really selling anything good, but he does have some llamas, which means we have a new captain of the brown pearl. I found out that if you tame them, they actually shouldn't despawn. So I lassoed one and pulled him all the way over to the brown pearl where he's gonna spend the rest of his days. And finally on day 642, it was time to test out this auto sorter. I loaded up a shulker box full of tons of stuff, just tons of random stuff, not even in any order or anything. I tossed it onto the special hopper and began sorting. That is until I realized I made a mistake and I put iron blocks in there, which isn't a part of the sorter. And so I had to take them out. And now everything's working fine though. This thing was definitely worth all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into it. Day 642. Wait, no, that was the same day. Hold on, wait. And on day 643, I spent the whole day just growing and chopping down trees because I was going to need a ton of wood to make chests and hoppers for the next big project. <gasps> Running out of air. Which is actually going to be in the nether. And so I climbed all the way up to the zombie piglin farmer so I could finally set up an auto sorter for this thing. Hey, did you guys know that I learned how to make auto sorters? <laughs> I've also had tons of people just commenting on this series for a while now saying that I need to set up an auto sorter for this thing. So I can help out with all this lag with the items it just, it's too much so i'm finally doing it but while setting this thing up i had some complications i built the entire thing and i used glass as my building block because well i mean it just it looks cool in the nether but then for some reason it just wasn't functioning i was pretty committed to wanting to use glass so i wasted tons of time just trying to troubleshoot it and figure out what's going on but eventually i came to terms with the fact that it just must be the glass and so after reconstructing the entire thing it was fully functional so i guess glass just isn't like a conductive block or something I, I don't know how it works and what better way to test it out than afking in this farm for the entire day and well i mean it turned out perfectly i got a ton of xp healed all my tools and all my items are getting sorted so can i get some big w's in the comments and on day 649 to 650 i started off the day by trying to figure out how one of the llamas got into the potato boys farm i like how it's too tall to even fit through the makeshift doorway let alone actually getting through i don't i don't know how this happened i just hope he's a 
fan of potatoes. And then I made my way into the nether so that I can fly over the roof all the way to the giant sand island so I can be able to shovel tons of sand for some TNT. And one day this island's gonna be empty and, and life's, life's gonna suck. When I need to figure out another sandy situation. Day 651, I started off the day by crafting up all that TNT. This is definitely the most TNT I've made yet. So I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of netherite this time when I go mining. But then I went to go grab one of my shulkers from the auto sorter and well, it got sucked into the hopper. And then I, I don't know where it went after that. It just, it kind of disappeared. It's normally just supposed to go all the way to the trash can, which is the chest at the end, but it, I mean, it didn't. So now I lost a shulker box. Day 652 to 665. Time to hop in the nether and go TNT mining. I'm gonna try to get as many ancient Debras as I can so then we can be able to finally make that netherite beacon. I was feeling pretty good going into this mining session with all the TNT I had. So I mined a really giant snaky line that just serpentined back and forth and began placing TNT all the way through the tunnel. Then there was an accident and then some TNT started blowing up and I started getting worried. I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna die in here? Luckily the TNT stopped, but there was a giant ocean of lava pouring in from the ceiling. And honestly, I probably should have just taken that as a, uh, a forewarning. But afterwards, I finished placing all that TNT and it was time to light it up. Every single TNT I got just started exploding. And then a giant lava ocean just started pouring in from the ceiling. So some deep lava lake is sitting above where I mined. And this is just way too much lava to try to just get rid of it. Who knows how much ancient debris is just hiding in this place. I tried to get as much as I could that was on the outsides, but it was just so much work trying to navigate through all this lava. Day 666. <laughs> funny number. Back at home and I'm smelting down what little ancient debris I have. Unfortunately with all the netherite I already had left over I only managed to make one netherite block. I wanted to try to finish out this netherite beacon by 1000 days but honestly this is just a big L. It's gonna set me back a lot of time. Afterwards I made a new shovel so I don't gotta deal with silk touch anymore on my shovel. I was getting kind of tired of it. And then I went to go enchant my new shovel and then I got silk touch again. So I grindstone it off and enchanted it again and this time I got some good ones. Day 667 to 677. Finally time to build that a new sugarcane farm. I decided I was going to split up my base and the right side of my base is going to be all my auto farmers and then on the left side is where I'm going to live and use storage and do all my normal other things in Minecraft. And this time I made sure the sugarcane farm was going to be much bigger than it previously was so I could be able to try to get as much stonks as possible and honestly I was just getting excited thinking about the stonks. I'm definitely going to start building out the trader tower a lot more so that I'd be able to do more paper trades like this. And then bam on day 677 we got a brand new sugarcane farm. Now theoretically this thing is three times the size, so I expect about three times the output, which is going to be about three times more stonks, which means I'm going to be more dummy rich. Day 678, I decided to AFK at the zombie piglin farm because, well, I'm, I'm still sad about all that lava when I went TNT mining. Honestly, my ego is a little bruised. <sighs> and to make it even worse, I found out my auto sorter for this farm somehow broke again. So things aren't even sorting correctly and my life is just in shambles. But I was also here because I was also trying to decide what my next big project was going to be. That's when I remembered that I actually wanted to work on my wither skull farm but to do that i was gonna need a lot of wither roses which i remembered my boy sb737 made an awesome wither rose farmer in his 800 days of hardcore minecraft i'll also have a link down below for the tutorial for that farm but to get those wither roses i was actually gonna need to spawn a wither and for that i was gonna need heads and i kind of just ran up and down the lane trying to get heads and luckily i did have some good drops because on day 679 i spent the entire day just preparing for the farm because it was actually a really big project that requires a lot of specific pieces and I didn't want to forget anything, which uh, didn't stop me because I definitely did forget a lot of things. And I had to fly all the way back and forth just to be able to get them. But either way, and on day 680 to 698, I began this long and difficult journey of building out this wither rose farmer. But to be able to build it, I was going to need to go all the way out to the outer end. So I could be able to find a return end portal or whatever those things are called that take you back to the normal end and then you go home, which took so long. But eventually I managed to find one not too far from my normal portal. But after finding one, I began construction. I had to get rid of the portal by using a mushroom because apparently mushrooms are super OP and they actually just break every block except for bedrock. After that, I had to set up a little homemade cage so that then I could be able to toss in a chicken or maybe a few. <laughs> After that, I set up a hopper and chest system to collect all the wither roses. Then I had to tower all the way up and build a giant platform for the endermen to spawn on. And what's an enderman farm without using an endermite? The worst part about trying to do these farms. So after purling my face into the wall 300 times, I managed to get a little endermite spawned. I named him small. And now that that's taken care of, I decided to build a glass platform up in the sky so that I could be able to AFK for this farm. And then began the final stages of construction. All I had to do to finish up this farm was pretty much 
spawn a wither, which was kind of terrifying, but it ended up working out. And so now the wither targets chickpeas babies while the endermen basically just fall onto the wither and get clapped. And then it gives me all the wither roses I need. And the last thing I'm going to do to kind of fine tune this farm is to actually just dump tons of water everywhere. I mean, it's super tedious, but it's very effective. I'm trying to prevent endermen from spawning anywhere but the giant platform where I need them to spawn. And it worked out in the end. And on day 699, after placing all that water, it was finally time to AFK for a day and see how well this thing works. And after AFK for almost an entire day, actually, this thing produced some good chunk of wither roses. I mean, I'm definitely going to be coming here often. I also got a lot of pearls, so I'm definitely going to have to make like a sorter for this as well, because, you know, I'm on, I'm on a sorter spree for some reason. And finally, on day 700, with all those wither roses, I can finally upgrade the wither farm. Well, I'm going to need a lot more roses, but I mean, this will do for now. The only downside to this upgrade is the fact that I got to mine up tons of nether brick, because you can't place a wither rose on a nether brick, but wither skellies are able to spawn on wither roses. So I have to mine up all the nether brick and replace it with nether rack, so that then I'm able to place all the roses down. And since, like I said, withers are the only ones I could spawn on roses, gonna make it so that this entire farm is only gonna be spawning withers now. But unfortunately, I ran out of roses, but more importantly, ran out of time. I really worked all the way down to the last minute on this video. Day 701. Now that we're back in the ocean world, it's time to get back on the grind. By that, I mean, I'm gonna quickly just run around in the chicken forest and collect all the eggs so I can start yeeting them into the sky. I feel like I'm running out of chickens. I don't know. It's getting a little empty over here, so I need to spawn some more. Afterwards, I figured it's about time I get the llama out of the potato farm. Still confused how this even happened, but uh, I need to get him out of here because he's contaminating my potatoes. So instead, I just tied him up right next to the brown pearl so he could be jealous of his brother. Afterwards, I figured I'd loot the potato farm, but it seems like one of the potato boys isn't really doing much of any sort of trades to his friend. So I decided to move his composter a little bit closer and then maybe that'll solve the issue. But the other potato boy is cranking. This guy's getting tons of potatoes. So afterwards, I took those potatoes and did some stonks and decided to dunk a couple of my villagers to get zombified since I'm going to be doing some stonks later also. But to do that, I was also going to need some more potions of weakening. So I went to go brew up a couple. And now that we're done cooking it up in the kitchen, it's time to re-villagerize or whatever you want to call it. Day 702, it wouldn't be an ocean only video without taking a trip out to Mount Chickpea. But this time I decided to boat all the way over there in the Brown Pearl and take Captain Llama over there so I could build him a surprise later on in this video. I also just realized that we never named the captain. So comment down below some names. Either way, after arriving, I said hi to Chickpea and then made my way over to the banished cartographer. I decided that it's finally time to unbanish him and take him home. Mostly because I just wanted another cartographer at home so I could be able to do some glass trades. That's when I decided to try to take the other llama all the way back to Mount Chickpea to hang out with his friend. But I wanted to fly over there because I'm getting tired of boating. But this llama's dummy thick and he wouldn't let me fly. And so I gave up and now he's just gonna kind of just sit there in the ocean being water llama, getting all soggy. Day 703, I decided it's finally time to fix up the iron farm. There's nothing wrong with it. I just wanted it to be a lot easier to be able to get the iron. I'm getting tired of climbing up the ladders. So I wanted to set up a chest and hopper system, but to be able to do that, I was going to need some wood from the storage room. But then I remember I lost my purple shulk, shul, shul, a purple shulker box inside the auto sorter in the last 100 day video. So I pretty much just spent the day trying to figure out where it went wrong, where'd my shulker box go and how to fix the problem. But it all worked out in the end because I ended up getting my shulker box and I found out where the problem was. Day 704, it's finally time to set up all those hoppers and chests for the iron farm. This way I'll never have to climb all the way up that thing just to loot it ever again. And I'll probably honestly never have to empty it out again either. Since there's just all the chests and hoppers, they can just back up all the way to the top. But while upgrading this thing, I actually realized I want to do a real upgrade for this. I want to add another layer to this farm to be able to see if I can be able to get more iron out of it. I don't know if it's going to break it or if it's going to mess with the spawns for the iron golems, but either way, we're going to find out. Originally, I wanted to start the project to upgrade the farm today, but while gathering all the resources I was going to need, I realized that I needed some string to be able to make beds for some more villagers. But I did, however, find a chest with a bunch of gunpowder in it, which is going to come in clutch later for netherite mining. But like I said, to be able to build up this iron farm, I was going to need more string. So I flew over to the spider spawner farm and hacked away at a bunch of baby spiders for the day to collect a bunch of string to be able to make the wool to be able to then make the beds. <laughs> Day 706 to 709. It's finally time to upgrade this thing. I thought that since I'm just adding another layer to this farm, that it'd be easy. Well, I mean, kinda. I started off by building up a new platform to be able to set up all the beds, which meant that I was gonna need a bunch more villagers, which is always kind of tedious because they're villagers and I hate the villagers so much. But to make it easier, I set up a rail system from the penthouse all the way over to the iron farm. So I could be able to just send them off and live in the bubble for the rest of their lives. But they knew what was coming and tried to avoid the minecart as much as possible. Ugh but they didn't have the determination that I did. So after getting their consent, I 
forced them i forced the villagers into the mine cart and sent them over and now that i got two villagers over here it's time to just feed the beasts so that they can just breed and have more babies but that's when an iron golem already spawned so i mean that's a good sign of this thing already working then i closed off the top built a cage for the iron golems so that they could be able to spawn up there and the last thing to do was just set up a hopper system all the way down and connect it to the chest that i set up earlier and then bam we got ourselves a fully upgraded iron farm i don't really know why i did this but i'm just making the world more op but after setting all this up it actually reminded me that the zombie piglin farms auto sorter is broken so i figured i'd go give it a fix and after a quick diagnosis i came to the conclusion that it must be the glass that the repeaters are sitting on since in the last 100 days we found out that glass doesn't really work well with this auto sorter so i swapped it out and decided to afk for the rest of the day in hopes that it was fixed and it wasn't so i'm officially giving up on this thing i did however get a ton of xp out of this so i guess that was kind of worth it day 711 to 712 in the last 100 days i began upgrading my wither skeleton farm which is set up so that only wither spawn on wither roses and nothing else can spawn in here but i was gonna need a whole lot more wither roses so i don't know why i'm here in the nether when i actually need to be in the end and all this flying around just so i can be able to make that example and say that made me waste a day so go me but then i afk'd at the enderman farm for a day and just let loads of endermen just plummet to their doom and when i flew down there to loot the chest there's a whole bunch of wither roses this thing's actually a really good farm day 713 to 715 i'm back in the nether and on my way over to the wither farm that is until i realized i was gonna need a ton of nether rack for this thing because i'm gonna have to dig up all these nether bricks just to be able to replace them with nether racks so that i could then plant wither roses on them because you can't put them on the nether bricks for some reason and it's just a really long and tedious job but when it was all done i almost finished the entire right side of the farm and so i figured i'd give it a test and there was a lot of withers but not on the right side this thing still needs a lot of work to be able to be fully done but honestly i'm just so nethered out right now day 716 decided i wanted to make a new pickaxe with silk touch so i grabbed some diamonds and crafted one up then i made my way over to the enchantment table which apparently was having a good day because it offered me silk touch on the first enchantment but because i got a small brain i actually forgot that you can't combine silk touch with fortune so instead of wasting the pickaxe i decided to double down on it made my way over to the trader tower so i could be able to do some trades with my librarians i bought a couple efficiency books and a mending book so i could be able to upgrade that beast day 717 we're on our way down to the mines where i was actually greeted by an enderman but it was finally time to put that silk touch pickaxe to work well that is after i also slay all the mobs down here jeez damn guys there's so many i'm getting tired of having to mine tons of cobblestone to then have to cook it and then turn it into stone brick so i figured mining with silk touch efficiency and haste would be pretty op but i forgot i built my storage room above the underground beacon so then while trying to move it i was getting attacked by a bunch of relentless mobs but although they had the numbers i did have the strength and they actually just didn't stand any chance and so finally on day 718 i spent the entire day just mining some rocks yep just mining my life away nothing too much to talk about here day 719 decided it's about time to upgrade the bee farm well i wanted to make an auto farm for them but i also wanted it to be spacious so i spent the entire day just building out a new platform right next to the chicken forest but after building out the outline I, I didn't realize i made this thing just so big oh well anything from my baby bees so i closed out the day by filling it all in with dirt day 720 to 728 it's time to build out that bee farm i'll have a tutorial link down below for the auto farm setup i'm using technically this is a bit overkill since i only have one beehive at the moment but i am planning for the future and for the sake of stonks i want to start this off by building this thing much bigger than it needs to be ha, get it be <laughs> okay but after building up the farm and knowing how tall it was gonna be it was time to close it in so that the bees won't escape but while building i was actually visited by another wandering trader but like normal their sales were subpar the only thing that was really interesting was vines but i also did buy a couple more birch saplings because at the time i didn't remember if i actually had birch or not even though it's gross but i also bought a bunch of cyan dye to add to the collection but after that i pretty much just finished up with closing in the bee bubble and the last thing i had to do was finally move over all the bees and plant a bunch of flowers Look how happy they are. They just love life now. And the beehive was already full of honey. So I managed to get three honeycomb out of it and I was able to make another beehive. The bee expansion's already happening. Day 729. Emptied out the mob farm of all the gunpowder, which actually turned out to be more than a shulker box full. So I decided to start taking it over to the storage room where I already had more gunpowder. So then it ended up being more than a double chest full of gunpowder, which actually, I mean, this is the most I've ever had. That's because I'm trying to craft up a ton of TNT because I'm trying to make some good progress on making that
that netherite beacon. Let's be able to craft up all that TNT. It was time to take a trip all the way out to the desert island where I'm going to just shovel my life away. I'm definitely starting to run out of sand out here though. So I'm going to need to find another solution soon. Day 730 to 743, I crafted up all that TNT and jumped into the nether. And this time I was much more strategic with how I was going to be placing my TNT because last time I blew it all up in one giant line and then a giant lava pool just fell right on top of everything I blew up. So I have no idea how much ancient debris is over there. All I know is that I wasn't going to make the same mistake this time. And I didn't actually. This mining trip went way better than the last one. Granted, I still had to fight through tons and tons of lava and zombie piglins, but regardless, I did get a ton of ancient debris. By the end of it, I actually had six and a half stacks. And so on day 744, I started smelting all that ancient debris. And I started quickly crafting it in a netherite, and I realized that, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to need a lot more gold because this is actually so much. So I went back to the nether all the way up to the zombie piglin farm on the roof, but even that didn't have enough in it. So I had to AFK for the rest of the day, which worked out because I got tons of XP and all the gold I was going to need. And so finally on day 745, we're back at home and I'm finally smelting down the last of those ancient debris and turning it all into netherite. And with all the netherite I crafted, I managed to make 11 whole blocks, which actually ended up being enough to cover one entire side of this thing. There's only one thing I quickly wanted to go do, and that was to swap out the glass on top with a black stained glass. And bam, look at this thing. It's already looking really good. I mean, that thing's definitely going to the thumbnail. I'll tell you that right now. Day 746. I figured it was about time I went and cleaned out the honeycomb farm. And even though I didn't really spend too much time in the overworld since I built this thing, it's definitely got, it's definitely producing a lot of uh, honeycomb, that's for sure. So now I can finally start making some more beehives and then also breeding the bees. But for that, I need to wait for them to come out. I mean, it just takes some time. But after breeding the bees, I decided to go grab a bunch of flowers from the iron farm so I could start planting them all over the place for them. Soon I'll have all the honey in the world. Well, I kind of do already have all the honey in this world because, I mean, it's the ocean only world. And yep, day 747 to 748. It's time to go on a new adventure. I wanted to build a giant new brown pearl for Captain Llama. But for this build, I wanted to use a lot of spruce wood. But unfortunately, the only way for me to get spruce wood in this world is for me to fly around and just go... <laughs> is to fly all over the place. And unfortunately, the only way to me... <laughs> and unfortunately the only way for me to get all that spruce wood is to just fly around mindlessly all around this world just breaking down tons of shipwrecks but at least on this adventure i did find another giant island and this one actually had a ravine for the first time and i was hoping that maybe there'll be a grass block inside because i've seen that happen before but unfortunately that wasn't the case and for those of you who are wondering yeah i did talk to the developer of this world and um yeah it technically should be impossible for me to get a grass block but uh we'll see we'll see about that but at least I'll have an island nearby so I can be able to rob it of all the sand that I need later. After that, I pretty much just continue to break down tons of shipwrecks until I had enough wood to be able to build up my own. And so on day 749 to 762, I spent the entire time just building up the new brown pearl. Now I'm by no means a build lord, but I mean, you guys know that when I got to turn up, I can. I can build a pretty nice looking house every now and then. I also want to add another disclaimer that I've never built a ship in Minecraft before or a boat of any kind for that matter. The only boats I ever build are the ones that are in of the crafting table <clears throat> so i just did my best to use a normal shipwreck as a reference to be able to build this thing but after tons of hard work and lots of building i finally finished what might be my least favorite build ever yep no nah, i hate this thing i'm fully prepared for the roasting to come and honestly i feel like one of my major mistakes when building this thing is i did a two block center so i mean the flagpole is a bit thick but regardless i mean i'm not going to be the one captaining this thing captain llama is so i flew all the way out to mount chickpea to pick up captain llama and I broke him free of that old nasty brown pearl. And I flew him all the way back home. Because honestly, it's way faster and I wanted to save some time. But we were coming in a little bit too hot. And Captain Llama's not a flyer. And so we ended up hitting the old bee farm. I knew I should have broken that thing down. Now today is just a horrible day. And don't worry, of course I created a tombstone so that we could be able to remember the best captain ever. We didn't even get to name him. But I had no other choice but to take Water Llama. And make him the new captain of the brown pearl. Because he's the only other person qualified. But that's all also when I realized that there was a bunch of scoundrels down in the poop deck. One of them almost blew up and sank me ship. But now that that's all over with, it's finally time to move on. Day 760. Hmm. Okay. Uh, day 764. It was definitely time to go tear down the old bee farm. It's blocking the view. It's blocking the view. 
Oh, why am I saying view? It's view. View. It's blocking the view of my new boat. And then, I mean, it also did slay Captain Llama. So I definitely got a lot of pleasure breaking this thing down. But when finishing it up, it actually turns out that we had a chicken try to escape. And I was honestly contemplating banishing him all the way to Mount Chickpea. For he to be spending the rest of his life. But I decided to give him one more chance. And then afterwards, I went back to go check on my bee farm. And dang, this thing's cranking a lot of honeycombs. Now I can finally finish out building up this row of farmers. So now I'm going to get even more honeycombs. And eventually, I'll expand this thing so I can be able to also get honey bottles. But I also need some more bees. Which, I mean, yeah, they're a little shy. They, they take some time to come out. Don't worry. But eventually, they finally came around and they did. Day 765 to 769. It's about time I go do some trades with my villagers. You guys know I'm about that stonks life. I mean, just check out the floors on my base. Well, I mean, that's exactly what I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to expand the emerald floor. Honestly, I feel like it's just so underrated. I think it looks so good. But that's probably also because I can't get grass in this world and this is the only green I can see. I kept zombifying villagers, curing them, getting better deals. I clean out the bamboo farm because that thing's getting really full. I do some stick trades. My brand new sugarcane farm's coming in clutch as well. I managed to make a ton of emeralds to the point that I actually finished up with doing the entire floor of Trader Tower. It was a long process, but I mean, I still got it done. I'm definitely gonna have to expand the Trader Tower. I'm thinking about maybe doing a whole level of just Fletchers and then another level of just Cartographers because I definitely need to invest in doing some glass trades. And on day 770, I wanted to upgrade the mob farm because, well, the chests are getting pretty full. <laughs> this thing's pumping out so much loot, it's ridiculous. But to be able to expand the mob farm, I'm going to need to make some hoppers. And for hoppers, I was going to need chests. And for chests, I need wood. I kind of used pretty much all my wood on the uh, the new brown pearl. Uh, yeah. And hey, look, Captain Llama's mourning the, uh, the death of his brethren. <laughs> And so I pretty much just spent the rest of day 770 just growing and chopping down trees, trying to gather as much wood as possible so I don't got to do this for a little while. Day 771. About time I finally upgrade this mob farm. I wanted to set up plenty of chests because I don't want to have to worry about looting this thing for a while. So I cascaded some chests and built a platform underneath the, the already existing platform so I can have some easy access to get all the way down there to the chests. And I also figured just for a safe measure, since this thing really is pumping out a lot of mobs, I figured that I would load up my inventory and shulker box as much as possible with just tons of mob trash so i can be able to go put it in the storage room for later and so that way that this thing will actually be a little bit cleaned out because i mean honestly like i said it's just pouring out too many mobs day 772 to 800 yeah no this is this is uh i want you guys to know this is a big project recently i uploaded a video of me draining out an entire ocean monument if you guys haven't seen it, i'll have a link down below but it was a lot of work it took an insane amount of time and it was definitely the hardest single project i've had to do in minecraft but ever since doing that video i had this idea of about in the ocean world, I have the exposed stronghold. And I've been wanting to make it so it's a lot easier to get all the way down to the end portal. So I thought it would be a great idea to just cascade some blocks all the way up to the surface. But what I didn't realize is that this was gonna take a long, long time. For days, I'd be placing blocks all the way up to the surface, going round and around the portal over and over and over. You don't realize how hard it is to build things underwater until you're actually doing it. I can't even tell how many times I was attacked by drowns or a fish got in the way but eventually i finally made my way to the surface and well i mean I felt very achieving, but I wasn't done yet because although I was closing in on 800 days, I wanted to try to get as much done as possible. But luckily though, since I did that ocean monument video, I actually have a really good strategy of how to get all the water out of this thing. That's pretty much just spread out about five blocks and then make a really long row of sand all the way through. So it divides a little area so that I'm able to just place down sponges and then soak them all up. And I pretty much just continue to repeat that process over and over and over, but it was definitely worth it. This thing is gonna be awesome when we're done. But unfortunately, I didn't even have time to completely clear out the last row of sand because the sun was finally setting on day 800. And on day 801, now that we're back on the world, I decided to go fly my way over to Mount Chickpea and say hi because everyone loves to see the ocean's true mascot. I don't know why you guys love this chicken so much, but I decided to fly him all the way back home because I'm going to need him for a later project. And after returning home and landing very safely to make sure that he wasn't going to hit a building or anything, I tied him up at the docks and began cleaning out all the auto farms, starting with the potato farm, that is, which again, it seems like one of the potato boys just still isn't working and I don't know why. And afterwards, I went over to the bee farm because I just always 
always forget about this thing. It's hiding behind the chicken forest, and yeah, I never see it. But there was a ton of honeycomb, so that's good. Oh, and then also the OP mob farm is, yeah, no, it's it's really OP. It's starting to fill up again. I got like 12 double chests, and this thing's just filling up too fast. So I took out all the gunpowder to save for later. Day 802. Started off the day by swapping out one of the shears inside the bee farm for bottles. Since I want to try to achieve all the advancements in this world that I can't even get, because there are some that are going to be completely impossible, and I will not be able to get them at all. <laughs> but for that, I was going to need a honey block. So in the meantime, I made my way over to Trader Tower to say hi to everyone and then went up to the penthouse and started doing the great breedening. Just started tossing potatoes everywhere for everyone because I'm going to be doing a big expansion at Trader Tower and I'm going to need a whole lot more villagers for it. And I figured while waiting for all the villagers to do the deed, I might as well go through all the advancements and brainstorm which one I can actually do. Day 803 to 811. I began the long, tedious process of expanding Trader Tower. Basically, I wanted to create another floor full of traders, but to be able to do that i was gonna need to drop them all down and which i figured the easiest way to do that it would just be punch a hole in the ground and just push them into it but uh that's some some villagers didn't survive the fall <laughs> But after getting a bunch of villagers down, I started construction. It isn't until I found a librarian trying to sneak out. So I stuck him in a boat and I'm going to decide his fate later. Then I began the process of building out everybody's cubicles where they're going to be basically working for the rest of their lives. I had to make sure all the redstone was wired up properly so I could be able to make all my villagers transform into zombies so that I could then get the best deals possible. But I definitely regret bringing villagers down first because they just kept making the process way more annoying and they just kept getting in some worried stupid villagers. And after a long building, session i got all the villagers trapped and set up with jobs and now they're ready to be zombified all i was gonna need was well an actual zombie <clears throat> so in the meantime while waiting for it to become nighttime i went ahead and set up a rail system where i could be able to trap a zombie and ship him off to work and yes i slayed larry the librarian no workers of mine can ever escape trader tower and now that it's nighttime all i needed to do was wait for a zombie to spawn which uh, definitely took a lot longer than i expected but the zombie i did catch actually had a sword already which is actually gonna help with the zombie However, it did make it difficult for me to push him in the minecart because he hits like a truck. It took almost all night just to be able to get him up there, but that's also because I kept making a lot of mistakes. But after making mistake after mistake and having to deal with him hitting me over and over and over, I eventually finally got him where I needed him to be. And so I gave him a name tag so he'll never despawn. And yes, I did name him Please Stop Hitting Me because, I mean, he just kept relentlessly hitting me and wouldn't cooperate with me all night long. And well, with the sun coming up on day 812, I started off by cleaning up the big mess I made trying to get the zombie up there. Afterwards, I dropped all my villagers down for everyone to get zombified. But with all my villagers getting zombified, that means I was going to need a ton of potions of weakening. So I pretty much just spent the day just cooking up in the kitchen. Afterwards, I went to go check on the villagers, and for the most part, yeah, they were all zombified. Well, one of them, one of them didn't survive. He uh, got clapped a little too hard. And so I began healing all my villagers, but quickly I realized that with healing all these villagers multiple times to be able to get the good deals, I'm going to need an insane amount of gold. And so on day 813, I figured I'd fly my way all the way up to the gold farm in the nether. So I could be able to AFK and just collect tons of gold. But man, this thing's uh, it's getting really full, actually, with tons of swords. I really need to stop being lazy and hook up some furnaces. I'd be getting way more gold out of it, too. Yeah, I'll make that a job for another day, though. I pretty much just afk and let tons of zombie piglins fall to their doom. Do doom. I also got tons of XP, so I think it was a worthwhile trip. Day 814 to 835. I crafted up all the golden apples that I could, but the villagers still weren't cured from the first time I zombified them. So I figured in the meantime, I should get started with some advancement hunting. So I made my way over to the bee farm so I could be able to check on the honey bottles from earlier. But there was only three honey bottles and I needed four to be able to make a honey block. But that's also when I noticed that bees are getting stuck behind the farm, which means it's slowing down production, which means it's causing me money. Well, not really, but it's slowing me down and I don't want it to. So I figured while waiting for them to be able to get that last honey bottle, I could be able to close off the top part of this thing. So I don't got to worry about all my bees getting stuck back there anymore. And by the time I was done with all that, it was actually nighttime. And I also haven't slept in a couple days, so there's a lot of phantoms flying around so i figured that i could be able to get two birds and one stone achievement and to do that i was going to need a crossbow which luckily my fletcher sells them i figured the easiest method to get this advancement would be to just trap some phantoms inside of a boat so that i mean i could just perfectly line them up and shoot them both with a crossbow so after getting them trapped i made my way down to the enchantment room and enchanted the crossbow with piercing so i could be able to damage both of them at the same time and then i looked them in their sad little eyes and i i just let it rip dude i don't care about these things i hate phantoms but i had to do that like four times because apparently phantoms just have 
a lot of health and I, did, I don't know how these guys survived for so long but it was actually worth it because I did get two crossbow achievements out of this in the end after that while it was still dark out I figured I could also go for the sniper duel achievement and try to bust a cap in a skelly from 50 meters away but I didn't even know if this was going to be possible because I don't know if my base is even that big really and after a handful of attempts I actually found the perfect spot I stood on my beacon and shot a skelly all the way over near trader tower and got the achievement and for the next advancement on the list I figured I could finally get sticky situation now that I got that honey block that I've been waiting for all I got to do is slide on this thing which turned out to be a lot harder and more time consuming than I thought like seriously I was I was covered in honey I was grinding all up and down this block and I don't know why I couldn't get the achievement I did the same thing over and over but it eventually ended up just giving it to me next up I decided to get the bullseye advancement this one's actually pretty easy you just got to hit a bullseye from 30 meters away which I mean isn't really the easiest shot to make especially because this advancement is a little bit buggy and doesn't always work even though you're shooting the bullseye but it is easy because I got this awesome workaround for it all you got to do is put a trap door on top of the target and string some redstone to it and just shoot a million arrows into the top of the trap door and then when you flick a lever 30 meters away and boom there you go you got your advancement and you even get your arrows back afterwards another pretty easy advancement I figured that I could be able to do while I was still in the overworld was charging a compass with a lodestone so I crafted up a lodestone with some chiseled blocks and then I connected my compass to it so that I'm never gonna be able to get lost at sea again all right, well, that was an easy advancement. And since it was so easy, I figured that we could start doing a little bit more difficult ones. By that, I mean doing some in the nether. <laughs> the next advancement on the list was gonna be fully charging a respawn anchor in the nether, which I haven't really kept any crying obsidian in this world. So I started flying around, hoping to find some inside of bastions. I was even trying to do trades with piglins to be able to get some. I feel like I get so much of this stuff and it's so common, but the one time I actually wanted, I couldn't find any. But after multiple bastions and tons of trades, I managed to scrap together the last bit that I was gonna need from a ruined portal and so i made my way back to the nether base crafted up a respawn anchor and charged it all the way up i mean i don't, I don't even know does this thing work inside a hardcore should we test it out i don't know <laughs> comment down below let me know does this thing actually save you in hardcore mode next up while we're in the nether i figured that i could get the advancement this boat has legs really quick since i mean there's tons of striders everywhere all i gotta do is craft up a mushroom on a stick find myself a good boy and then boom got the advancement but i did want my saddle back so um <clears throat> Next on the agenda was possibly one of the hardest advancements to get for sure. I've only ever gotten this one other time and I hated it. I was going to have to take a ghast into the overworld and then clap his ghostly cheeks. And what I learned from the last time I did this advancement was to definitely just make a giant portal so that they could fit their fat heads through it. I also decided to build the portal near a soul sand biome in hopes that maybe a ghast will spawn close by. But like I said, this is definitely by far one of the harder advancements I did. It took days and many attempts to try to reel in a big one. It was chaotic. I even had some close calls. There was just too many gas and I, I just, they wouldn't cooperate with me. I went through tons of food, tons of fireworks and a handful of fishing rods. But after a couple close calls, I did manage to finally bag a big one. I took him into the overworld. And so I went through the portal and I cranked back my bow. And then I deleted that thing from this world. And no, look, we even got some friends. Oh my God, there's another gas. This time I decided to stun on the gas for scaring me. I used my triton to get airborne. Then I did a downward swing on the gas with my looting three sword. I felt like the true king of the ocean right there that was pretty epic i'm not gonna lie and on day 836 since that advancement was a ton of work i decided to take a break from advancements and so i started off the day by getting a mending book for my bow because apparently it still doesn't have one and i noticed it's getting a little low i figured while i'm buying this mending book i'm already here i might as well drop all the villagers down so that they can be zombified but i also did notice that uh some some of them are missing so uh i don't know what's going on something might be wrong with the setup because i think the zombies clapping a little too hard after that i I added the mending book to my bow then i made my way into the nether and i have kid for a while to make sure i got enough xp to be able to heal up all my tools and armor and then i went down to go grab some gold out of the chest and oh my gosh it was it's just such a hot mess this thing is just so disorganized remember i said that i was going to procrastinate having to fix this thing for a while well, I, I think i'm gonna have to <laughs> it's finally time to fix the auto sorter and add some furnaces and so on day 837 started off the day by cooking up a bunch of stones so i could be able to craft up a handful of blast furnaces because i want these swords smell and quick but after crafting those up i actually had to double check to make sure that i could even smelt down a sword in a blast furnace because i know you use it for ores and then yeah, I mean, it worked out in the end it's fine afterwards i needed to head down in the mines but on my way i actually noticed that captain llama's trying to escape his ship 
Like, come on, buddy. Just this is your forever home. Just enjoy it. And I made my way down into the mines so that I could be able to get tons of coal because, well, I'm actually running low on it at home, but also I'm going to need a lot of coal to be able to smelt down all these swords. But while down here mining for all this coal, I actually remember that I still want to try to find a slime chunk because unfortunately I can't get slimes in this world unless it's in a slime chunk. So I pretty much just mined all the way through day 838 as well. But uh, oh gosh, it was it's such a hassle mining down here. There's so many mobs. But honestly, we made a pretty big dent. Still no slime chunk, but we did make some good progress. And something about leaving all the ores exposed like this, just, I don't know, it looks so cool to me. But finally on days 839 to 849, yeah, this is a 10 day journey, but we got it done. I made my way back into the nether to be able to fix this farm finally. I quickly just set up some blast furnaces so that they could be able to smell down all the swords, but I was hoping that maybe if like a sword was in the furnace, maybe it'll grab another sword, but that's kind of not how it works. And then a bunch of rotten flesh just kept going in the furnace. So I did have to fix the auto sorter, unfortunately. And with a ton of trial and error, I couldn't figure out what was going on with this auto sorter. I mean, I'm not an auto sorter professional. I honestly thought that maybe it's because we're in the nether and the nether is somehow playing a factor. But I realized actually, and I found out that I was placing some of the hoppers wrong and that the hoppers were supposed to be going into the comparators, but I had them facing sideways. But after getting that fixed, it was working perfectly. And all I had to do was reorganize, uh, re reorganize an auto sorter. But after cleaning up all the chests, I figured the best way to fully test this thing out and make sure that it is fully functional is to actually AFK some more. So on day 850, I just pretty much AFK the majority of the day. And it turns out it's working perfectly. Man, my brain's feeling real swollen for fixing such a simple problem that I caused. And on day 851, we're back in the overworld. I started off the day by curing all my villagers that I dropped down below a few days ago and I totally forgot about them. But either way, they're getting cured now. Afterwards, I crafted up a ton of fireworks because it's time to go on a little bit of an adventure. In the last 100 days, we found some islands not too far away from Mount Chickpea. And I was gonna need a ton of sand because we're starting a new project. And that project's gonna be to completely drain out an ocean monument. Now, recently I did do this in my OP hardcore world. And due to high demand, I figured that I might as well do it in the ocean world too. Everyone's been saying for the longest time that I need to do this in the ocean world. And honestly, I do agree it is the ocean ocean world and I do need an ocean monument. So after viciously shoveling tons of sand, it was time to begin this project. And luckily there is an ocean monument not too far away from the base. And I'm pretty sure I already did slay all the elder guard. Okay, apparently I didn't. Hold on, we'll be back tomorrow. And on day 853, now that I got some underwater breathing potions, it's time to swim through this thing to get the last Elder Guardian. Man, I hate these things. These things are like mazes. I'm getting lost. I thought I was gonna have to fly away, lose my miner's fatigue to be able to then be able to mine through this thing to be able to find him. Cause I'm pretty sure I know where he is. He's like at the top part of this thing, but I can't swim to it. Or so I thought, eventually I finally found the path. And I quickly gave that thing the clap clap. And it was finally time to begin this massive project. Days 800. 54 to 861. It took me forever just to be able to outline this ocean monument. Naturally, I was going to go with the giant circle shape again because honestly, circles in Minecraft just look the best. There's no way around it and you can't change my mind. But it felt honestly impossible. There were so many guardians just relentlessly laser beaming me and just nonstop. I even had a couple close calls, but we managed to finally get the entire circle wrapped around this giant thing. And I mean, with, you know, minimal errors, I'm sure there's a couple spots that probably didn't line up properly. <clears throat> and after successfully getting that giant circle wrapped around this entire thing now it's time to lay all the sand and, and i do mean a, a lot of sand it if you've ever drained out an ocean monument, you know that this is the most longest, tedious, draining, and depressing part about doing this entire project. And honestly, just to save your guys' sanity, um, Jake, maybe we uh, make a like a montage or something here for everybody showing me laying all the sand. And on day 879, after that long and tedious building process, I decided to get back to working on some advancements. And the first one on our list is actually Be Our Guest, which is actually another B achievement. And I don't know how I missed this one earlier. It seemed pretty easy though. All I gotta do is put a bonfire underneath a beehive and then scoop the honey out of it. But I mean, that's not really how it went though. Actually, it took forever. Cause I don't know about you guys, but my bees, they like to just come out of the hive and then start sniffing some flowers and then go right back in the hive and do nothing. I even took all the shears out 
out of the dispensers just in case that those were to go off and I wasn't able to get the honey. They just took so long. I was breeding the bees and I was standing there and then I was breeding the bees and then I was standing there and it took all day long. But I did manage to get the achievement in the end though. And the next advancement on the list is you need a breath mint or you need a mint. Either way, it's the one where I got to scoop up the dragon's breath. So that means I got to resummon the dragon. And for that, I was going to need some gas tears. So it's time to go into the nether and go gas slaying. I flew around slapping gas left, right, and center. Gas after gas after cast. And after getting all the tears that I was going to need, I figured that I should probably dismantle the nether portal that I built to get the gas into the overworld for the other achievement. Because, well, I mean, I might need some obsidian later and it's also big and ugly, but oh gosh, it took so long. But after that, it was time to resurrect the dragon. So I crafted up the end crystals and made my way over to the end portal. And then I jumped in. It's time. And you guys have seen me slay the dragon like, you know, like a million times. So Jake, maybe we do like another little montage thing. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, what an epic dragon fight, yeah? But now that that's over with, that's not the only achievement we're getting in the end. Because the next achievement that we're going for is actually great view from up here, which is an achievement that you need shulkers to shoot the snot rockets on you, so then you float in the air like 50 meters. So I made my way into the outer ends to go try to find an end city. And I mean, that, that took a little bit longer than I thought, but the one that we did manage to find is one that I haven't looted yet. So it actually had an end ship. And of course I hopped right on that thing, grabbed the potions and clapped a shulker and got myself a free elytra. So now we have have another backup elytra just in case if anything goes wrong with my main one now that that's out of the way it's time to get this snot rocket achievement going this achievement's not too difficult it's mostly you just got to find the right pathing to bounce from shulker to shulker to get snot rocketed on one after the other and oh my gosh it just turns into a snot fest but i did manage to get it though and then afterwards i decided that i should probably dismantle this thing yeah, no, I, I, I want to dismantle the end city. It sounds kind of dumb, but I did want to build a new base on top of the end portal, and I wanted it to be end themed. And to be able to get end blocks, I figured the easiest way to just take them from the end city. So I spent a couple days just completely dismantling this thing, mining as many blocks as possible, which is easier said than done when you're fighting a bunch of shulkers and they're just constantly pushing you and knocking you into the air. And oh gosh, they're so annoying. But after a miserable mining experience, now look at the end city gone completely gone no i'm just kidding that's it's it's right over here yeah i mean i didn't get every single block like i said you know with the shulkers being annoying you know you just you start missing some blocks and you don't want to go back for them but either way this is this is a patchy ugly mess but it's time to go home or so i thought because on my way home i actually found my wither rose farm and you know i do need some more wither roses for the wither farm so i figured that i could just afk on top of this thing for the rest of the day just watching tons and tons of endermen just funnel into a hole and they're impending doom by that i mean i just kind of sat on twitter and you guys should go follow me on twitter and instagram if you guys haven't already <laughs> but now that that's out of the way it's day 887 we're back at home but not for long though because it's time to go back into the nether because we're gonna fly all the way across the roof to go fast travel to a giant sand island that we've been shoveling away at because we pretty much just shoveled up all the sand on the little islands near our house so i mean it's time to go back to this big beast that's been good to us but i'm also coming to terms with the fact that this thing's slowly running out of sand finally i've loved this island it's helped me out so much and you might be wondering why i want sand well that's because it's time to go make a bunch of tnt and go tnt mining for ancient debris so on day 888 i pretty much just crafted up all the tnt that i could and luckily i did already have a big stockpile of gunpowder which we went through pretty fast and i actually needed some more so i made my way over to the mob farm and again this thing is yeah no it's starting to overflow this this is getting out of hand this thing's too op but i did finish up with making all the tnt that i was going to need which actually ended up being a little over eight stacks of tnt Tea, which is a whole lot so on days 889 to 897 we're going ancient debris mining so i flew into the nether all the way down to the hollows is pretty much what we're calling it where we've been tnt mining the entire world away and i found myself a good spot where i mined a really long long tunnel and i was basically going to serpentine all the way back mining tons of little tunnels all the way through connecting so i could be able to have all the tnt just set each other off so after mining tons of little tunnels it's time to place down all the tnt that i got serpentining back 
back and forth. T and T, T and T. That is until a fire happened, and I, I have no idea how this fire happened. It just must have been lava or something dripping through the ceiling. But it scared the crap out of me because it set off all the TNT that I placed down already. So I quickly ran away, and luckily I'd made it out alive. But unfortunately, it revealed the fact that I was underneath a giant lava lake. So I guess it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, telling me to stop placing the TNT here. So I did my best to jump around trying to get all the ancient debris that I could, but unfortunately the lava was too strong. I tried patching up the holes, but there was just no way. They were just way, way too big. I was clearly directly underneath the lava lake. So I began doing the same mining pattern, just in a different area of the really long tunnel. And after mining tunnel after tunnel after tunnel, it was time to place down all them TNTs that I got. Place down every single block that I had, and I just let it rip. And this time it was much more forgiving. Luckily, there wasn't as much lava. So I ran around mining every single ancient debris that I could, which actually ended up being a little over three stacks of ancient debris. Oh man, I'm getting parched. <laughs> And so now on day 898, we're back at home and I start smelting down all the ancient Debras. Well, not for very long because I realized my pickaxe is getting a little low and I wanted to go heal all my tools and I didn't want to risk ever breaking another netherite pickaxe. So I went back into the nether and I made my way up to the zombie piglin farm where I just AFK'd for a little bit to be able to make sure I get enough XP, but also I was going to need gold for all the netherite. So after a quick AFK session, I made my way back and I crafted up all the gold nuggets into ingots and I even grabbed all the gold that I currently already had in my storage room and it still wasn't nowhere near enough. I already ran out of gold and I was still smelting down more ancient debris. So I figured the quickest and easiest way was to be able to go to a bastion. Because if I could be able to find a fresh bastion, then I'd be able to get tons of gold out of it and it'll be relatively quick because I'm really short on time. And luckily, not too far away, I did manage to find a fresh bastion that I haven't hit already. And it actually was housing, which is super easy to be able to get all the hidden gold out of. But on my way over to that hidden gold, I opened up a chest and actually got pig step out of it. And I couldn't remember if I I already had pig step in this world, but it's definitely one of the dankest songs in this entire game. After that, of course, I robbed them blind of every single gold block they owned, and I made my way back. And finally on day 900, we're back at home and I'm finishing up with all the netherite scraps that are smelting and slowly just turning every single one into a netherite ingot and then a netherite block. And in the end, I managed to get six netherite blocks. This has been such a grueling journey to get all of these netherite blocks. The original goal was to be able to get it before 1000 days. Now this is gonna be a big, big challenge to be able to finish out this entire beacon by a thousand days. But unfortunately we're done with 900 days. And so it begins. <laughs> now nah, I got this. In day 901, I start off this 100 days by saying hello to everyone's favorites like Chickpea, Captain Llama, and the Potato Boys. But that's also when I noticed that my game was seeming like it was a little bit laggy. And I was thinking that it's probably because of all the eggs in the chicken forest and all the entities and stuff like that. So I just ran around collecting eggs, throwing them around. And I mean, it definitely helped out in the end. Afterwards, I decided it's finally time to build the best chicken in all of Minecraft, a throne. And for that throne, I was actually gonna need a ton of wool, which luckily I have a stupid amount of string in the mob farm. So I can be able to turn all that into wool. After that, I went to go make some orange concrete for the little gobble gobble, what was this, was the thing underneath a chicken's neck where it just, it hangs the flap, what I, either way. But that's when I went to go examine chickpea and it turns out that the gobble gobble things actually, it's, it's red. I, I don't know why I thought it was orange <laughs> and so after <laughs> i hate myself jake and so after making some more colorful concrete it was time to begin the game of building the throne and yes of course my goal is to make this thing look like a giant chicken and yes there was also a lot of chickens that got lost out at sea during the building process but honestly i think that's kind of a good thing we need to we need to clear out some areas here and okay okay i know the throne turned out a little ugly but don't worry i end up changing it later on so just relax it's fine just accept the fact that it's ugly for today okay and on day 902 to 904, I start off the day by strapping up Chickpea to the new throne where he can lead his chicken army with an iron feather. After that, I decided to go down into the caves because in the last 100 days, everyone was commenting of saying that I actually did find a slime chunk, which I didn't even see that there was a slime in the background. I, yeah, I had no idea. So I went to go double check so I could be able to find that slime chunk. But to be able to find that chunk, I had to fight through tons of mobs just to be able to make room for a slime to spawn. And after finding that slime chunk, I brought up the chunk borders and I began mining out the entire chunk 
chunk just to be able to have it wide open as many slimes to be able to spawn as possible after that i began fencing off the entire thing and then afterwards i went to go hang out with the flower endermen for a little bit to be able to give the slime some time to spawn but when i went back down there the chunk was just full of tons of mobs yep no, literally no slime um so i'll definitely have to figure out how this works later day 905 remember when i fit remember when i said that i was going to fix the chimkin throne well today is the day as this is also when i realized that it was it was really ugly <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how i didn't see this sooner but also not long after working on the throne actually a wandering trader spawned so i grabbed my emeralds and i went and bought myself some orange dye some vines and even some cactus Cac cacti cactuses cactis yeah whatever after that i decided to slim down the chimkin head and make it a little bit more you know give it more depth you just just it looks prettier now I, I mean you agree come on now i think it's infinitely better and on day 906 i made my way into the nether and flew up to the xp farm so i could be able to heal up my shovel because i'm going to be putting that thing to work soon so i pretty much just afk it so i could be able to get tons of xp and heal up all my tools and of course i grabbed all the gold out of the auto sorter as well and on day 907 to 910 we're back at home but not for long because we got to go fast travel all the way over to sand island my goal coming over here was pretty much to shovel up every single piece of sand on the island I mean, now this island's been good to us. It's had a lot of sand, but I'm going to need a ton for some upcoming projects. And we've always been worried about the day that this island will eventually just run out of sand completely, but it's finally time. I'm a rob it completely blind and leave it naked. Oh, that sounds weird. Either way, there's not going to be any sand left on this island. I mean, look at it. It's just barren now. We have no reason to ever come back here. Thank you, Sand Island. I appreciate you. Everyone pay your respects to Sand Island. Put an F in the comment section. Day 911. It's time to begin the project of draining out the ocean monument now we already prepped this thing in the last 100 days and walled off a giant circle all the way around it but it's time to start draining it out but to be able to do that i was going to need tons of sponges so i went swimming around in the ocean monument to try to find the secret sponge room but even with this sponge room I, it wasn't going to be enough i was going to need a lot more sponges so many in fact that on day 912 i actually made my way over to another ocean monument one that i haven't cleared out yet though so obviously first i had to deal with all the elder guardians swimming around trying to find them i mean it just it took forever dude with the miners fatigue and then also it's just a maze and it took me forever to find the stupid ugly fishy but after slaying all those old nasty gray looking fish i spent a little bit more time in the maze just to be able to find that sponge room and it worked out perfectly because we ended up with almost a stack of sponges we got a whole lot now and finally on days 914 to 928 i spent the entire time just draining out the ocean monument well not all of it obviously because this is just such an insanely huge project i've done it once in the past and it was just a ton of work i began the process of laying down tons and tons of sand creating giant walls to section off portions of the ocean monument because sponges can pretty much only drain up to like five blocks of water or something like that so i had to keep each of the sections fairly slim so that the sponges could just be the most effective and i don't gotta go through it as much and then after soaking up all the sponges i had to go to the nether to be able to dry them all off and then come back and it just it was such an insane amount of work i had to do that over and over and over again and after losing tons of brain cells i finally drained out a good enough chunk of the ocean monument that i felt like i made some pretty good progress and i deserve a break from this and start working on some other projects don't worry this thing's gonna be done by 1000 days i'll make sure of it and so on day 929 i decided to go empty out all the farmers because well i mean it's been a while and those are auto farmers so they're filling up and of course like always this mob farm is just getting too full so i figured i would just start taking out all the gunpowder which i mean there was so much that i couldn't really carry it in my inventory and unfortunately all my shulker boxes are full of sand still at the ocean monument so i decided to craft up another one this time i made it blue after getting all the gunpowder then i also made my way over to the iron farm and this thing yeah no it's still cranking adding that double decker layer is definitely starting to pay off but that's also when i noticed that the sugarcane farm is it's it's just it's not working it stopped I, like the mine cart isn't moving but it's designed to continuously move this must have been semi-recent because i mean there is still a lot of sugarcane inside the chest maybe for some reason a spider crawled inside and then blocked the the mine yeah yeah that makes sense actually <laughs> yeah either way i fixed this thing up got the mine cart going again and i even blocked it off just to make sure that no spider was ever going to crawl in there again and on day 930 to 931 i decided to get a jump on the next big project after the ocean monument but that's going to require a ton of blocks from the end in the last 100 days i practically leveled out a giant end city and today i pretty much plan to do the exact same thing so i made my way over to another giant end city and just began mining away But unfortunately, this was a 
thick end city with a ridiculous amount of shulkers. They just made it so difficult to be able to get anything done. I even had a couple close calls where I started getting a little bit too low on health. Just getting to the point though where I was just like, eh, screw it. I already do have a lot of end blocks. Maybe I'll come back if I really need it. So I gave up on mining this thing down for now. And on day 932 to 935, I was on my way over to the storage room to get a bunch of emeralds to do some trades with villagers when I actually noticed a raid party on the platform I made a long time ago. This is actually incredible because I didn't even think that raid parties were going to be able to spawn in this world. And out of the entire series, I have yet to have a single raid party spawn, which means that I have absolutely no totems of undying this entire time, which I would gladly take some. But it was finally time to do a raid. At first, I was hoping that they'd just kind of spawn in the water and I'd be able to shoot at them with arrows. But unfortunately, they have plenty of room on my giant floating island in the ocean. <clears throat> but that still didn't stop them from jumping off and swimming away. The weird thing is, is that every time that they jump in the water, they kind of just, yeah, literally kept swimming away. I don't know why. They just kept swimming away from the villagers when normally they'd go towards the villagers. Like literally my first evoker, that dude was gone. He was zooming. He was trying to sail to go find some mainland. But unfortunately in this ocean, no one escapes Paul Sidon. after a couple days of giving everyone the clapping, the raid was finally complete and I managed to get four totems out of it or but I I thought that you get five totems or something isn't there supposed to be five of them? I don't I don't remember exactly how many totems you get but either way we got some totems finally day 936 I started off the day by decorating the base with all the banners to commemorate the battles that we won then I decided to go do some trades now that I got here with the village so naturally to maximize my deals I also dunked all my villagers down to get clapped by the zombie but that's also when I I made my way upstairs and found out that there was just a million iron golems up there just freeloading away so i pretty much just spent the whole day just chopping them down uh day 937 started off the day by curing all my villagers i can't wait to get them sweet deals then i went and placed down a tons of carpet upstairs just to make sure that there wasn't going to be any more iron golems spawning and after that i made some dinner yep no like i the villagers were taking forever to transform so i went and made dinner but it was kind of pointless waiting for the villagers to transform because once i got back from eating I didn't even have my hero of the village anymore. <sighs> yep, no, it's gone. So it's time to get back to that ocean monument. On days 938 to 969, I spent the entire time just working on this ocean monument, trying to drain it out. Like I said, I was pretty adamant about getting this done in this video. And this thing is just such an insane amount of work. Last time I did this on my normal hardcore world, I said that I would never do this again because it is just so draining trying to get the, well, yeah, it's draining, draining the ocean monument. I guess that makes sense. But it's just such an insane amount of work. And so, I mean, it is a super tedious process. So I'll have Jake, my editor, just throw together one of those delicious 80s montage that you guys love. Is that another another pillager? I got another pillager squad roaming around. I can't believe I've already gotten two in this 100 days compared to this entire series. I've had zero. Either way, after tons of sponging and dropping sand, the ocean monument was completely drained. Well, on the outside, that is. <clears throat> so on day 970, I pretty much just spent the entire day just swimming around, clearing out the inside of the. I pretty much just spent the entire time just clearing out the inside and get rid of all the water inside, just sponging it all away. And on day 971, I decided decided to wrangle up all the chickens that have just been floating around in the ocean. Well, I mean, for a couple reasons, actually, because one, I think you guys are going to get really mad at me if I just continue to leave all the chickens out there. And two, I'm getting tired of hearing them as I run around in the base. But there ended up being way more chickens than I even thought there was going to be. So it took a little while to actually get them all wrangled up and then got to take them into the pen and then just... 
stupid chickens. There's too many now. I didn't ask for this. Why is chickpea gotta be such a baller and have so many kids? And now it's time to begin the next giant project. You thought the ocean monument was a huge project. Well, this is also equally as big. The fact that I'm actually gonna build this in the same 100 days as the ocean monument is blowing my mind. But I wanna build an entire end city inside the overworld. Well, my own version of an end city, that is. I don't wanna build it to look exactly like the normal end cities, but we'll see how it goes. So after gathering up all my blocks, I flew over to the end portal because I feel that'll be the most suiting place to build my overworld end city. I started off this build by completely covering the top with end stone, which I mean, it sounds counterintuitive because I drained out the entire thing. Don't worry, it'll make sense later. I needed all the building space underneath where the end city was gonna be too. But of course, not too long into this build, I actually found out that, yeah, I don't have that many end stone. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. So I had to go hop on into the portal and go mine me some end stone. But after finishing up with the giant platform, it was time to construct the base of the entire thing, which of course I was gonna go with that purple block mixed up with the uh, end stone brick because I mean, it's just so iconic to the end city. It's gotta look kind of like an end city. Besides just something about that color combo that mm, it just pops, you know what I'm saying? That was a chef's kiss, by the way. I wasn't trying to, you know. Mm. This build actually took an insane amount of time, way more than I thought it was ever gonna take. That's also because I wanted to make the branching out arms as well. Oh wait, but this plane in the background is like throwing me off. Hello, it's me, that pizza person who was once imprisoned in Paul's phone. But thanks to you, he set me free when we hit 1 million subscribers. I'm now off to Costa Rica or the Bahamas, I'm not sure. All I know is I'm done living in Paul's fridge and being a pizza person. I'm now called, Plain Cena. You won't see me again until we hit 2 million subscribers. Be sure to sub if you're not. I will send a postcard when you hit 2 mil, but until then, Plain Cena out. So there'll be like the floating rooms up in the air. And then also halfway through this build, I actually realized that this, this thing is looking, uh, it's looking a little sus. Not gonna lie, I don't know. I don't know who designed the shape of this, but uh, it doesn't look right. I also built a tube that goes all the way down to the end portal for easy access. I just, I don't know if it's gonna hurt me jumping into it or not. I, I don't know. Do, do you take fall damage? I don't know. We'll find out later. We got totems to waste now. But the above ground part wasn't really too difficult. That was actually where I actually spent the least amount of time. But it was when I started going down below. That's right. I I actually wanted to add kind of like a basement to the end city. I wanted it to have the same like corridor feeling though, where it was like when you walk through an end city, it feels very tight and narrow and creepy and scary. But I did that all below the end city as well. And not having all that water underneath actually saved me a ton of time. Because building out all these corridors and everything while also dealing with water is just, it'd be too much work. I'd have to drain it all out and everything again. Ultimately though, this thing actually, like, like I said, it was an insane amount of work, but I think it turned out pretty amazing. I definitely vibe with it and I've never done anything really end related build. So I think I did okay for my first time. And then finally on day 999 at the home stretch, the finish line to hitting 1000 days. Now I actually did spend majority of the day just walking around, looking at everything that we've achieved in these last 1000 days, visiting all the favorite characters throughout this series, just to be able to get some B-roll because I actually wanted to talk about this series. Unfortunately in this world, I actually can't update it to the most recent updates. And I, I really want to continue playing on it, but you just run out of things to do in the ocean. And I don't want to continue to force myself to build things and it kind of ruins the series. Series. I'd rather make each video feel more purposeful and everything. So I'd, I'd yeah. because this is a custom world and if I do update it, then it completely ruins the generation and it'll start generating like normal mainland, like a hardcore series. So I was going to do a poll on Twitter. And if you guys don't have Twitter, don't worry. You can just comment down below. I mean, I check the comments. I want the feedback of whether or not I should update this world to 1.17 and turn it into a normal hardcore series where there will be mainland and stuff and not the ocean anymore. Or I start a completely new authentic original 100 day series that is just insane and amazing comment down below and if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure you guys smash that like button don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new here and i will see you guys in the next one